quarter, and let's make sure in the fourth quarter we have a ball game out of this. Of course, Buford is not only ranked number one in the highest classification in Georgia, it's also ranked number six, Max Preps nationally. This is one of the best teams in the country. This would have been true no matter what, but it's even more true with the Georgia committed quarterback, Dylan Riola, now on this roster and playing very well here in his first year. How does Riola make this a different Buford team? Well, I tell you what, you look at him and the ability to make different throws at different arm angles. He comes in with a lot of a big game experience. I talked to Buford offensive coordinator, Gus Condon, today. He said, Rusty, he makes all all the protections. He said, Rusty, he's been here two and a half months. He knows as much as I do about this offense, and that's what makes him special and makes this Buford team even better. Of course, we love talking about high school football with you each and every week, but tonight we are sad to tell you that Marietta will play with heavy hearts. Liv Teverino, a beloved member of the Marietta High School football uh, and, and school community, was killed tragically this week in an automobile accident. The team tonight will honor her memory by wearing her initials as a decal on their helmet and the cheerleaders will wear pink ribbons also in honor of her there as well an incredibly sad story rusty obviously and everyone we've talked to this week has mm -hmm. talked about just how loved she was by really everyone that she came in contact with. i had so many people reach out to me in the marietta community i got a chance to talk to coach morgan before before the game now he said rusty we had a lot of members out of practice on tuesday and i understand it's been a tough tough time so certainly my prayers are with that young lady her family that entire community at marietta and these students having to deal with this and as Rusty said to everybody there in Marietta, we obviously understand that our words probably don't mean a lot perhaps right now, but we do mean it sincerely. We're praying for you. Our hearts are with you. And we'll obviously have all of you on our minds as this football game continues tonight. Hey, is the power off on this? I don't know. Just take it off. Safety violation. Unsafe work conditions. In the construction trades unions, safety is our highest priority, and we train you to recognize and speak out on unsafe working conditions so that everyone arrives and goes home safely. Learn about careers in construction at georgiaconstructioncareers.com. Are you 18 years of age or older? Become a star. The Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office is now hiring for deputy sheriff with a signing bonus up to $4,700. They also have civilian and trades positions available. If you are interested in a career with the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office, visit GoGCSO.com to learn more about compensation, incentives, benefits, and areas where you can start your career today. Are you ready to rise to the call? Join GCSO today and become a star. America, come along with our adventure seekers and discover summer with Ford. Join friends Maisa and Leslie on an epic adventure with the capability of the Ford Bronco Sport. Head out with the Stevens family and stay connected with built-in Wi-Fi in the Ford Explorer. Did you know that we're just sweet standing up? Road trip with the Sanchez family and available hands-free highway driving in the Ford F-150. Now get 2.9% financing for 60 months plus up to 4,500 cash back on select Ford SUVs. See your local Ford dealer and discover your best summer ever. The try for the GHSA state title is presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. Transform your future today. And with kickoff coming up shortly, it's time to get a better insight into the matchup with our R.S. Andrews head coach's interview. I am joined by Brian Affling of the Buford Wolves and Richard Morgan of the Marietta Blue Devils. Coach Morgan, I want to come to you first. Year in and year out, you play one of the toughest non-region schedules in the entire state. What's your thought process behind that, and how does that benefit you in the second half of the season? Well, the standard that we've always tried to set is a standard of greatness. And in order to have achieve greatness, you're going to have to take on the best teams, and you're going to have to face adversity and go through those challenges, and that's why we do it. Um, it's great to play great programs and great atmospheres like this. So, I mean, it's a win-win for our kids. And then you hope at the end of it you're ready for region play because you've seen the tough competition, and you feel like your team is prepared prepared and, and ready to go into a region schedule to try to compete for a championship and get to the state playoffs. Absolutely. Coach Appling, the standard at Buford every year is always a state championship and everything on paper points to potentially another one for you. But what's something you can tell me about your team that stats can't capture? I, I think they, they're together. They, they love each other and they, they pull for each other and they, they fight for each other every Friday night. Um, just, you know, the intangibles that we're trying to, you know, reinstill, you got to do it every year different groups and different kids. You gotta you gotta give them to understand that loving each other will take you a lot further than talent will sometimes. And Coach Morgan, senior quarterback Chase McCravey, he's really been the driving force behind your offense. What's the potential for him going into the season? 
Well, I, I mean, going into region play, I, he's seen the best defenses. He's seen the best competition. He's going to see another great defense tonight, probably the best one we'll see all year. So I think he can weather those storms and come out of that on the other end. I think he's got a great chance to have a great, you know, second half of the year, lead us to a region championship and hopefully beyond. But um, potentially, you know, he's done very well. He's got, a, you know, better decision making sometimes. But I think the arm talent's there, and I'm excited about what he's going to do. Coach Appling, five-star Florida State commit, K.J. Bolden. He's a guy that everybody in the audience knows his name. What can you tell me about him as a player, not just on the field, but off the field as well? Uh, one of the most special players I've ever been a part of, and that's, that's, it is on the field especially, but, but off the field as well. Um, just going to see, you know, little league uh, games and practices, and we actually went and spoke at a, um, at a nine-year-old, like, team dinner. And he spoke well, and he just talked about the culture of beautiful football and what was special about it to him. So he's loved by a lot in the community. He, he, loves, he loves everyone in the community in a bunch of ways. Well, Coach Avalon, Coach Morgan, I wish you both the best of luck. But since kickoff's coming up soon, I'm going to let you guys go. And now it's time to hear from Brandon and Rusty. Kaylee Manziel, thank you so much. Great job. And thank you to both Bryant Ampling and Richard Morgan. They're two great coaches in this game tonight. And as uh, Kaylee said, K.J. Bolden, one of many special players in this game. Let's check in on our coin toss now, presented by Georgia's Rome. This taking place moments ago, it was won by Marietta. Marietta deferred its choice to the second half. That means they'll kick off here in a moment, and perhaps we could see the electric K.J. Bolden on a uh, kickoff return here in just a moment. Buford looking good in that goal tonight. Boy, that's a sharp uniform. Marietta, of course, all decked out in white. Now the Marietta, uh, I should say the weather report, presented by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, local 613. It is absolutely perfect right now. 73 degrees. You see a gorgeous moon here. We're looking out over Buford, Georgia. I don't know that it's ever looked better or felt better here on a late September night, Rusty. I tell you what, I will, this is football season right here. And the atmosphere, this Buford sideline, ranked number one in the in the state, and then I'm telling you, Marietta, hungry, hungry football team. Davis Parrott will kick it off. It is short, and we are underway. Tom Ryden Stadium in Buford, George, as the Buford Wolves get ready to take on the Marietta Blue Devils. Kick return going to come out near the 40-yard line, and that is where the Wolves will have it. Devin Williams getting a chance to bring that one back. And our first chance coming up to see the Georgia committed quarterback, Dylan Rihola. I know our audience is very much looking forward to this, no matter which college team you root for. Yeah, I couldn't go anywhere this week with saying, hey, how do you watch the game? What time does it start? You know, even people that aren't fans of Buford are tuning in tonight to see this Georgia quarterback commit from Arizona who moved to Buford, Georgia this summer. You see the Georgia Army National Guard starting lineups, Ryola, we told you about. Also, keep your eye on K.J. Bolton. Let's see how much offense he plays tonight. A little cooler weather. You may see him more, of course, to Florida State commit. It is a running play on first down. That going the direction of Kobe Blackwell, the senior. And that brings up second down coming up. And let's see the uh, defense here for the Marietta Blue Devils. Once again, also brought to you by the Georgia Army National Guard. Strength of this group is probably what you see there up front, including Anthony Krua there. One-time linebacker switched back to defensive line. They felt like they needed that. They've also got an outstanding season here thus far from Kelvin Shaw at linebacker. So this is a good Marietta defense, as it typically is. Ryola will throw now here. That's a pass complete. Stiff arm there at midfield, and that moves it into Marietta territory. Nice move by Ty White, the UNC commit that time. Yeah, you see the quick release there, Ryola. Got a player down right here. Player down for Buford, and, man, they are thin on the offensive line. I believe we got another lineman down right now. Got a tight end. I believe it's number 87. Came in there. That is King Aaron. It looks like uh, King Aaron Monero, yeah. who may be down right there. So you're right. One of the things that Brian Appling, the Buford coach, told us this week was they've dealt with their share of injuries. They even have some players out here tonight. And so looks like they're dealing with an injury here right away to begin this game. So we'll take a uh, quick timeout, and we'll come back and try to give you an injury update and continue to watch Buford on uh, offense right after this. You don't have to wake up on the right side of the bed to know how you like your coffee. As long as it's McCafe Coffee from Mickey D's. Now that's what you like. Mix and match two breakfast hits for $4.49. Add any size iced coffee for $1.79. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. 
This summer is the best time ever to own a Jeep Grand Cherokee from Ed Voiles Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Right now, Ed Voiles has over 200 brand new Jeeps on the ground for you to choose from. And right now, during the Jeep Adventure Days, you can take as much as $12,000 off on your new Jeep. That's right, up to $12,000 off. This month, all the 2023 Jeeps must go. So right now at Ed Voiles, you will see nothing but our lowest possible price. Only at Ed Voiles Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Cobb Parkway, Marietta. Rev up, chow down, right on at the 2023 Superior Plumbing Presents North Georgia State Fair September 21st through October 1st at Jim R. Miller Park in Marietta. Visit NorthGeorgiaStateFair.com for more information. We're here at halftime with our special guest, the Pinnacle Girl. Bailey, I now know you know how to say Pinnacle. Could you say it for our viewers? Yes, sir. It's Home Improvement. Pinnacle Home Improvements is now offering zero down payment, zero interest, and zero payments for 12 months. Get a new roof installed, windows for your entire house, or new siding, and make it easy on yourself for a limited time only. It's Home Improvements. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Injury timeout is over. King uh, Aaron Monero was had to uh, be taken off the field, was able to kind of get off with some help. Uh, we'll give you an update on him. We have that available for now. Back to action. You see Buford running the ball on first down. More success for these Wolves on the ground. Dylan McCoy that time getting a chance to tote it. Yeah, very, very deep, very deep at running back, obviously, Buford. But, you know, they want to kind of establish the run a little bit tonight and free up this pass. And we're going to see some shots down the field. Uh, according to Buford staff from, from Rayola and crowd tonight. You see uh, Rayola there, the Georgia commit in the call shotgun. Him, call him protections. You see him calling protections there. You do see that indeed. He's going to hand it again, though. Another chance for McCoy across the 40 down near the 36-yard line. And you talk about the depth that Buford rolls in there at running back. They oh. even did that a year ago when yes. Justice Haynes was here. Four deep four deep, you know, giving guys carries. And now that Haynes is gone, a lot of those guys are in a much larger role. The experience they had a year ago has certainly helped them. Yeah, bring in a fullback this time, number 44, Aaron Holloway. You see him right in front of Raola. The straight eye formation there almost. Raola will hand to Blackwell. Blackwell to the 30. See if they take a shot right here on second and second short. You see Kobe Blackwell, the numbers on him on the year. And one of the things you'll notice with all these guys, as Rusty said, you're rotating so many running backs. Really, no one's going to carry it 28, 30 times a game. Brian Appling saying that he believes his backs appreciate the fact that none of them are going to be overworked here in this Buford program. It's been a staple this offense as far as I can remember with Buford. Receivers all on the right side of the formation. Rayola looks that way. It's a completion right there to White again. 20-yard line and moving the chain. So two catches already on the young night for the UNC commit. It's a little RPO read. Comes in the slant. He's watching the backer. When that backer steps up, he's going to throw right in that void. A little sidearm release from Rayola. We are in the red zone here presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. And... You know, Rusty, for me on Raiola, it's just the ease of release. Whether you got a little mustard on it like that one did or the deep ball that just has the perfect touch, yep. he just makes it look so easy to throw the football. Now forced to run. That, I don't know if that's a busted play busted or what. Play. Yeah. Yep. In there to make the tackle that time was Aiden Canty, the senior linebacker for Marietta, and that play never really had a chance. No, I believe uh, he was looking for a, a, a zone this towards the, the Buford sideline, and Running back went the other way, but just kind of tucked that and needed second and 11 here. See what they do. They go trips to the top. First time we've seen this tonight. He's been trying to find White early on. Let's see if he takes a shot with Tyshawn White, who's right there off the line of scrimmage on the inside. Yeah, kind of in the back of that trip formation over there, all on the left side of the formation. Instead, it's going to be running play right side, looking for a block, does not get it. Good job yep. defensively by Buford. There to corral the ball carrier once again, Dylan McCoy. Yeah, there's a numbers game. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't check that play once you see the numbers. I asked Coach Condon, I said, does he have full permission with this offense? He said, Rusty, he's been here two and a half months, and he knows as much as I do about this offense. He said, listen, we can talk about the throws. You can talk about this. You can talk about that. How smart he is in the film room and how quickly he picked up our offense. He said, I've never been around anything like it. 
third and 12 now after a couple of lost yardage plays. Man goes in motion for Buford. Same formation. Riola looking at fourth Marietta defender creeping up near the line of the scrimmage. Let's see if they bring pressure. Buford handles it. Riola, though, not going to have anywhere to go, and he's going to go down. Buford having a little bit of trouble here right now with that defensive front from Marietta, including Aiden Canty. His second big play on this sequence. Yes. Couldn't tell if he was trying to spin out of it. They beat him with, they got only had four guys there. Didn't bring an extra pressure. So pretty quickly here, a win for Marietta defensively, forcing the field goal attempt from Mario Ventura. This one's going to be 39 yards. And the kick is nice. good. Wow. So Buford gets some points, but after driving into the red zone in Blue Devil territory, Marietta bows its back, gets the stop. I think if you're Richard Morgan, you'll call that a win. And now your offense gets a chance at back coming up here, too. Yeah, and obviously talking to Coach Morgan, you know, he said, listen, Rusty had a lot of players out this week on Tuesday, and he understood and his son had classes with a young lady, and he just said, Rusty, I don't know. I really don't know how we're going to react this night. He said, I hope we play well to honor her. Incredibly sad situation, obviously. We're monitoring that all night long. Let's also check in on the Buford resume here, presented by Smart Local 85. Of course, Wolves 4-0 this season. An incredible run for Brian Appling, one of many very successful Buford coaches, of course, but a guy who really began his career winning nothing but state championships. Last year in a game that you and I were broadcasting, Shot. I think we'll probably remember it forever. One of the great games I think we've certainly done together, if yeah. not in either of our careers. No doubt. Uh, the win for Walton right here in Tom Ryden Stadium, and that is clearly a bad taste. It still lives in the mouths of these Buford Wolves. Of course, this team resume brought to you by Smart Local 85. Justice Haynes from this team a year ago, now at Alabama, one of just many, many dozens and dozens over the years, elite players who've moved on to the college ranks. We haven't had a chance to mention, oh, by the way, five-star Ohio State commit, Edric Houston. Who's That's one right. Of the best defensive lineman in America, number zero. You see Ventura's kick, and it's going to be a pretty good return there for Marietta, crossing the 35-yard line. That'll bring the Blue Devils out on offense for the first time tonight and a chance to see the senior quarterback, Chase McCravey. I'm telling you now, the ball gets out of his hand well. He, at times, he's had a few issues, but I'm telling you now, he's got a very live, a live arm, and he's athletic. Uh, you see our Georgia Army National Guard starting lineups. Bobby Butler's a wide receiver to watch. Injured a year ago, did not play at all. Now back and doing some big things here with this offense. Luke Morgan, the coach's son, also a big part of that passing attack. Russell Bay, kind of your lead guy on the ground, and he got the first carry and paid dearly for that. Took a big hit from this Buford defense. And speaking of which, once again, brought to you by the Georgia Army National Guard. You see number zero, the Ohio State commit, Edrick Houston, and he is a good one. Yes. Nico Maggio next to him. Also plenty of big time offers. Bryce Perry White, just a sophomore, but he's a five star. He's and you get this sense the that he may be the next one in 100%, line here. 100%. You want to watch a defensive end? Watch zero at the top and watch three at the bottom. Here comes Buford on pressure. It's going to be a pass complete. So good job by getting rid of the football that time for McCravey and a good catch by Bobby Butler. Love the play call. You know that Buford's going to bring pressure. Catch him in a tunnel screen almost like South Carolina caught Georgia last week blitzing. You know Buford's going to be heavy on the blitz. If you get something underneath and get behind him, brings up a manageable third and four on the first drive for Marietta. Let's see how McCravey wants to handle this. He's going to have a receiver off to the right side, three to the left. A back stands to his right. Here comes Buford again. Quick dump off. That's going to be a first down completion, moving the chains. There to catch that is Aiden Canty. Good night for him thus far. Yeah, good job there. Just a simple RPO read as well. It's a little quick slant. I'm telling you, McCravey, McCravey, I watched him warm up tonight, and he's a senior now. It's been a while since I've seen him. He's, he's got a really quick release with a really nice arm for Marietta. He's also got a fresh set of downs looking at first and 10. Fake the handoff with time to throw. Rolling right. Now I'm going to have to throw it out of bounds into triple coverage, but really mostly just trying to throw that away. And that's the ball that he would have forced a year ago. And that's, that's the senior right there. 
eat the play, come back and go to second and 10 instead of turning that thing over and trying to force it somewhere, live for the next down. And Richard Morgan told us there's no doubt to echo the point you're making that he's playing better and making better decisions this yep. year than perhaps a year ago. Yep. He was also honest to say that one of the things that's impacted some of his decision making is they haven't always handled pass pressure. Well, they're kind of a youngish offensive line. They have a, a freshman friend since starting on the right tackle spot. And so at times that perhaps impacts the time that McCravey has and therefore the decision that he makes. Setting up a screen here, that's going to be caught now trying to shake free but will not do so and the ball came out and it got scooped up right into the hands of Bryson Banks and the James Madison committed linebacker is going to take it back for a touchdown if this stands. Ball came free Banks was right there and he scooped it up in like one move as smooth as anybody will ever do it. You just see number 14 right here Brown try look at the balls out just trying to get some extra yards and that's what happens the ball was kind of away from your shoulder a little bit not tough see the ball out extended you take a shot there scoop and score for Buford just see who knocked that one out too by the way Edric Houston right yeah, in there on that telling you. chasing down a wide receiver to knock the football loose and that is how quickly things happen for the Buford Wolves they have a defense that plays like an offense yes And where they're not built in, like in the past, even though they got Riola, they're not huge up front on the defensive side, Brandon. There's there is as talented as I've ever seen. So once again, Mario Ventura on to try the PAT, and that's good. He's already got a field goal. He adds a, a PAT to that, and it was kind of going Marietta's way. Yeah, love and the then, play call again. Yeah, love the play call. Buford strikes quick with the defensive score. They are dangerous on that side of the ball. Blue Devils can respond, though, when we return. Good to have you with us on Peachtree TV. Hendrick. Drive now. Pay later. Shop HendrickCars.com this month and make no payments for 90 days. Over 20,000 new and pre-owned vehicles. No payments for 90 days. Visit HendrickCars.com. The Mechanical Trades Institute is an opportunity towards personal financial freedom through hands-on and rewarding work. Our school is completely free and gives apprentices the knowledge and skills required to gain access to a lifelong career path. Apprentices learn pipe fitting, plumbing, mechanical service, and welding. They earn money as they learn and graduate with no student debt. Start a career with the Mechanical Trades Institute and change your financial future. Struggling with food insecurity can feel lonely, yet every community across America is affected by hunger, which is why our Kroger associates work together to rescue nutritious food that would otherwise go to waste in an effort to donate 3 billion meals by 2025. Because we believe everyone should have access to fresh, delicious food. Join the Kroger Zero Hunger, Zero Waste Foundation to defeat hunger and eliminate food waste. The Forum River Center in Rome, Georgia is now open and available for meetings and receptions. We're fully equipped for large conventions, sporting events, weddings, and much more. The Forum is located downtown within walking distance of local restaurants, hotels, and boutique shopping. We offer a variety of meeting spaces, many with beautiful river views. Outdoor venues are available for that special touch. With our adjacent parking deck and a personal concierge on site. Your event is sure to be a hit. Find out more at ForumRiverCenter.com. The GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com Drive for the GHSA State Title is sponsored by Score Atlanta, your source for Georgia high school sports. HendrickCars.com. Get no payments for 90 days at HendrickCars.com. Experience the Hendrick difference. Sports Turf. You bring the vision, we'll bring it to life. The Georgia Army National Guard. The next generation is now. And by Ford. For great offers on F-150, see your local Ford dealer. And you see our score. Buford leads, leads Marietta 10-0. Brandon Adams, Rusty Manziel. And our scoring summary brought to you by Breda Pass Manager. Just one play. It's a scoop and score for Bryson Banks. On a fumble that came free, he picked it up. Ran 49 yards back for the touchdown. And tourist kick will take 
I was about into to the end zone by rule. You can't bring that out in college and pro. You have a choice. Not in Georgia high school football, though. I love that rule too. I mean, that's just you know we see some collisions on special teams, and if you're able to kick it that deep, you should get rewarded. Well, it also makes for an interesting strategy too uh, between. If you think you can kick it deep, but you don't get it there, all of a sudden it creates a very interesting return no opportunity. Doubt. As we see our Breda Pest Management score ticker rolling down the screen below you. We'll be watching that all night long, and we're looking forward to that. Some big matchups across the state here tonight. Carrollton on top of Hillgrove, 21-0, as a for instance. Buford swarming that running play. Nowhere to go that time for Russell Bay. Wolves were all over that. Jaden Perlotti there to make the tackle. Probably the latest in a broadcast we've ever mentioned in Georgia. Committee, yeah, no probably. kidding. No kidding. Perlotti comes in to wrap him up and does a great job with that. I believe we're going to go back and check out this um, replay on the fumble. Okay, we'll, we'll take a look yeah. at that. Yeah. Let's see here what's going to happen. Trying to set up the screen again. This has worked before. Yep. But not going to work this time, and Buford's all over. All right, let's, let's see the fumble again here. Let's see who comes in here and actually strips this on the hit. Let's see right. The helmet. Uh, Edric misses there. Zero misses. Yeah. It's like K.J. Bolden and Edric yeah. Houston right there. Yep. Pretty good stuff. Very impressive. That's not bad. That's not a bad crew when um, you see two five stars in on the tackle. That I want to make sure we get the right credit because I don't is, want any moms or grandmoms or. That is quite a duo there. Of course, Bolden committed to Florida State a couple of months ago in a ceremony that got lots of attention. Pass complete. Kind of back to the original line of scrimmage a little bit more for Bobby Butler. Second catch of the night for Butler. Kind of stirred things up pregame. I walk on the field and KJ looks at me and says, hey, Rusty, holds out the Georgia gloves. And you know how that goes. Sure. Days. You take a picture of that and social media is going crazy. But young man's committed to Florida State. He was in Athens last weekend and he said it in every interview. He said, listen, Georgia hasn't quit recruiting me. Uh, hasn't of course, in attendance for the South Carolina South game a couple of weeks ago. Last week. And I think he, uh, he might last be week. at Auburn next weekend on official visit there. So. Uh, you know, Florida State has him committed right now, but other schools still recruiting him. You see the punt away by Davis Parrott going to go out of bounds near the uh, midfield. And I think you and I have a similar mindset on this, no matter where a kid wants to play. We have a pretty high tolerance for having fun with your recruitment. If you want to wear uh, gloves, if you want to do stuff like that, if you yeah. want to take your visits. Yeah. And I mean this, whether a player goes to the school that we cover or goes to a different school, sure. yep. I, I think you get one recruiting process, and I think you ought to enjoy it as much as you possibly can. I've known KJ since he's a ninth grader. And this, like Coach Applin said in the pregame, I mean, like this kid's special now. He's special off the field, uh, you know, leader in this community, great family. He got a chance to meet his grandparents. Up in Nashville, the own three and I lead elite series, known as mom too, and just a really, really put together young man. He's gonna be a special player on Saturdays, I can tell you that. Riola surveys the scene, takes the snap. It's gonna be a handoff. Fighting up or down around the 46 yard line. Got about three maybe that time. Another carry for Dylan McCoy. <laughs> You know, when Riola came, you can imagine the buzz around Buford, and I think Buford did the right thing. They closed off all media yeah. and, and just let him get here and get his, get his feet wet, get to the community, get to the school. And, you know, the feedback I got from the staff was like, hey, Rusty, th this guy is just an incredible worker, came in, he fit in immediately with our culture, our kids, and it's been a really good thing for Buford right now. Well, in talking to some people this week, that was the other thing that came up was just how quick you see him drop the snap, pick it back up. Now he's got to hurry. Shakes free the pass rush, throws it. Big, strong arm. And what a, an amazing play. You're talking about a highlight. Oh Devin my. Williams comes down with oh the catch. My. Riola's going to the ground. What? <laughs> I mean, how in the world did he get it off? Williams makes my a diving catch. Goodness. You will see that again. Yeah, that will be the old viral this week. So he's in the grasp. Almost to just half a knee. Wow. I mean, does he make it look easy or what? Man, that's what excites you, that the play is never over until he's completely down. I mean, you think in Marietta, we got him, we got a pressure, and he throws one and you move the chains on you like that. 
now knocking on the door. Fresh set of downs. Ball sits at the 23-yard uh, line. Here's Riola setting up a screen. It's a completion. Marietta's there. Ball came free again. Marietta thinks it's fallen on it, and I believe that it has. Yes, big hit over by somebody. I think that is... Uh, yeah, let's get eyes on that, I, because on the far side of the field from where we were, somebody made a big play. I believe it was number 14. Let's see if Noah Brown, they come with a screen. 19, okay, so that's Mosley. Joseph Mosley, the safety comes up. He's the one that delivers the hit. Right, uh, so quite a play there. Mosley coming in, leading tackler on this team here this season. And uh, with that, we'll get a chance to see the uh, Marietta resume brought to you by Smart Local 85. Of course, state champs in 2019. Uh, the Ojolari brothers have come through here. So many great players going back a long time ago to the days of Eric Zire as well. Speaking of Marietta quarterbacks, McCreevy there on first down trying to throw, but that is incomplete. Young man they call Joseph Mosley. Joseph Mosley, young man they call Joe Mo. Played at Georgia League Classic last year. First time I really got a chance to look at him in detail. And, man, that was a great form tackle right there in space. Richard Morgan told us something funny this week. Mosley's the leading tackler at the safety position. He says, that's very good for Mosley, but yes. it's not great yeah. for us. Yeah. They don't yeah. want the, the yeah. safety yes. to be the leading tackler you never for much longer that. here this season. Looking at second 10 here right now. Running play. Room up the middle. That's Bay. He got himself a couple. That'll bring up third down. You know, I had a couple people ask me this week, why why would you do, do Marietta with a record they have? A player down. Hold yeah, that's Bay uh, right there. Yeah. You hate to see that. Yep. And I said, listen, let me tell you something I know about Marietta. You don't know the schedule they play, and I can tell you the product they put on the field, that they're going to play hard. Absolutely. We saw that a year ago. Marriott actually got off to a one and six start last year, but ended up finishing second in the region, made it to the second round of the playoffs. This is a team that knows how to fight back from adversity, and they will be called upon to do that here this year. Speaking of adversity, let me tell you what adversity in your home might be if you've got flying squirrels up in the attic, because believe it or not, in Georgia, that can happen. And if that happens to you, do not go up there yourself and try to figure all that out. Uh, trust our friends at Breda Pest Management, because those critters love to get in your attic and basement. And they're protected from predators up there. But Breda Pest Management can get up there and take care of it for you. So if you hear that scratching in your attic, don't draw straws to go up there. Choose Breda Pest Management to do it for you. Find them online, BredaPest.com. That's B-R-E-D-A, BredaPest.com. One thing I do not want is flying squirrels in my attic. I can promise you that. Looks like Buford may have jumped off sides. That's going to make third down a little bit more manageable here for Marietta. Defense, five-yard penalty, third down. You see our officials here brought to you by the Georgia Sheet Meddling and Air Conditioning Contractors Association. Greg DeFore is our referee. Antonio Harden, Michael Madison, Adam Porter, Bill Goldring, Jeff Williams, Matthew Elgin's electronic clock operator, and uh, Brandon Hall here as well. So they go back screen game here. Instead, it's a running play. Calling upon... Jalen Frazier to carry the ball. Remember, Bay left a moment ago with injury. We'll need to keep our eye on that. That's the leading rusher for Marietta this season. So they do get the first down. Clock ticking under two minutes in our first quarter. We were, we were in the third quarter last week with Marist. That's right. <laughs> we played one of the fastest games of our life. It was like Greg Maddox pitching back in the There's 90s no with doubt. the Braves. No doubt. That thing was over before it oh, started last man. week from a pace of play standpoint. Cravey setting up the screen again, and Buford is all over it. It's an incomplete pass, of course. Yeah, it's obvious they're trying to play quick game. They don't think they can block the Buford defensive line, so everything's tunnel screen, quick screen, out in space. The way you're going to have to do that, you're going to have to take some shots. Yeah, to bolster that point, you know, Coach Morgan told us this week that the offensive line has played well in spurts, yep. but they perhaps haven't gotten that consistent effort over the course of a full game. And I don't care if you got, you know, the old hogs from up in Washington. No doubt. Trying to block this, you know, group from Buford is no easy feat for anyone. Second down. They do give McCravey some time here. He's going to be able to throw it, but it's in a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Still on his feet and into Marietta territory. How about C.J. Sibley, the sophomore linebacker, comes up with the pick. Oh, 
Yeah, that's a play you want back right there because he had someone open in behind it, and he kind of forces this one in to double coverage. And Buford with another turnover. So let me ask you, how much of this is maybe caused by a little bit of a hurried pace because of the anticipation of the Buford pass rush? 100% there. Yep. And of course, that's going to put Buford in the red zone here, presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. And we'll see if that gives. I started to say that's going to give Ryle a chance, a chance to take the shot here. He's going to go under center. Send a man in motion. Ryle a handoff, cutting back down around the six yard line. Another good carry for Dylan McCoy. It's so weird to see a quarterback under center, isn't it? It is. Yeah, Buford will give you the traditional look. They will, They'll show they, you some they will go out of formation. They've done that forever. Yep, that, that's, I don't care who they got at quarterback. Buford's going to have eye formation as part of their offensive package. One of my favorite things about Buford is, you know, this is a program that's traveled from like single A up now to the highest classification. Yep. And a lot of what used to be true of Buford decades ago is still 100%. here. 100%. A lot of guys play two ways. They kind of have the same, you know, kind of offensive mentality. That hasn't really changed. Rella now going to throw towards the end zone. Wide open is KJ Bolden for a touchdown. <laughs> The light show is on here at Tom Ryan Stadium. That is a tough matchup. Riola to Bolden. You better believe it. A little quick snap here by Buford, going to turn into an option play. Marietta reads it well. Another good tackle by Joseph Mosley. So that stops the two-point conversion attempt. Buford apparently saw a, a look there on that and tried to catch Marietta napping, but Mosley's been good thus far tonight. And Buford still leads 16-0. Gives us a chance to remind you the football is back, and it's time to rise up with your Atlanta Falcons. Of course, limited season ticket inventory still remains, and you can select your seat today at atlantafalcons.com slash tickets. What is Falcons football? It's Grady putting quarterbacks on notice. It's Kyle shredding defenses like a unicorn. It's Tyler breaking tackles like bone screens. It's AJ locking down anyone on his island. It's Drake touching the sun. It's ZP breaking another record. What is Falcons football? It's all you dirty birds. Rise up. Okay, welcome back. 16-0 is our score. Buford just attempted to go for two. A little bit of a quick snap th thing there. Did not quite work. But what did work was our Breda Pest Management scoring summary. Dylan Riola to K.J. Bolden, and Buford has extended its lead. I mean, just you, you, if you're Marietta, you've had a few positive plays. You you've played pretty decent on defense. You've got after them a little bit, but you cannot give Buford extra possessions. Cannot I, have turnovers. I think the question we're going to be asking ourselves is, is Marietta going to be able to block it long enough? And that's, I'm not underselling what a tough feat that is, given yeah. the, the strength of this Buford front. Can yeah. they block it long enough to throw deep? Because when we saw in Correct. the same stadium a year ago, a game we broadcast, Walton beat Buford because they could throw deep. Yes. I think, I think yep. Marietta's got the receivers to do that. McCravey's got the arm. It's just about having enough time with all these elite recruits on the defensive front for Buford coming at you on every single play. Yeah, that Fred defensive line is running play here. Good to see Bay yes. back in the game. Yep. Big piece of the puzzle for them. And I'll say this, you know, Marietta won the state championship with Harrison Bailey and Eric Gilbert and Ramil Keaton and all that crew. They still had a very small offensive line. It was amazing. B in fact, B.J. O'Jalori played left tackle right. like 220. You know, That's and, right. You would look at them in pregame warm-ups. You go, man, I just don't know about this. I don't care, you know. But, uh, you know, they, they've never had an abundance of offensive linemen for whatever reason there. So that's going to bring our first quarter to an end. Marietta's got the football and a chance to cut into this Buford lead. The Buford Stars have been as advertised here thus far, and we'll hope you'll come back right after this. Pick up. 
Let's go. Let's go. Guys, come on. Go, go, go. Come on, come on. Yeah. Go, go, go. My favorite color. Because it's like a family thing. Leave running behind, behind. The new turbocharged Volkswagen Atlas does life beautifully. Visit your Volkswagen dealer during Fall Fest and lease the 2024 Atlas SE for just $3.99 a month. Limited inventory available. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Link your Ingalls Advantage card to your child's school, giving the advantage to those who really need it. That's our pledge to you. You don't have to wake up on the right side of the bed to know how you like your coffee, as long as it's McCafe Coffee from Mickey D's. Now that's what you like. Mix and match two breakfast hits for $4.49 and any size iced coffee for $1.79. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Rugabilitility. We straight made that word up. How else to describe the otherwise indescribable rugged, reliable, incredible versatility and affordability of a Honda SUV? Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com calls Honda the best value brand. Car and Driver calls Honda the winningest brand in 10 best history. But we like Ruggability. And you'll like the Incredifantabulous deals, so see your North Georgia Honda dealer today. Honda gets Georgia. All right, I'm here with Coach Richard Morgan after the first quarter. Offense, you guys want to be aggressive. You've had the mistakes, though. What are you just expecting on this drive? Expect us to settle down. I mean, it's the story of our season right now. We don't turn the ball over. We're pretty good. We turn the ball over. Not so good. So, I mean, we got to settle down and start making the plays. They're there for us to make. We're just not doing it right now. Awesome. Well, thanks for your time, Coach. Big drive coming up. And as you mentioned, Marietta was able to move the ball, just a little aggressive, trying to fight for the extra yards, the turnovers. We'll see what happens in the second quarter. Thank you so much, Craig Sager Jr., and a very honest assessment of Rich Morgan, yep. who is nothing but straightforward with every comment that he makes. And... He told us this week, we got to have some erasers. If we make a mistake, who can help us erase that mistake? A new quarterback in. Is there a new quarterback in for Marietta here right now? That's Carson Snipes. So Snipes coming in, and he's going to get a completion on his first time in the game. Flag down, too. Yeah, flag back in the uh, Marietta backfield here. <laughs> I did not see McCravey get hurt. This could be a coach's decision. Yeah, a turn over there, that last throw, and he might just say, hey, let's give this, this young guy a shot. See if he can get that spark going, yep. and keep in mind. Holding offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat, second down. You know, keep in mind, while this is a very fun game, and obviously two heritage programs in the state, it is not a region game. So Correct. you do have... Correct. A little bit of flexibility if you're either of these two coaches in terms of, you know, perhaps you hold a player back that might be hurt or you make an experimental decision because you want to see, you know, what your best 11 are as you move towards region play next week. They yeah, see uh, uh, Gus Condon there, offensive coordinator, long time offensive coordinator, enjoyed spending time with him today. Been here a while. So Snipes will be in the shotgun. He takes a high snap. It's a handoff, and it's Bay, and boy, Bay finds it tough sledding right in the middle of that Buford defense. Aaron Holloway, the junior linebacker, one of the guys in on that stop. Look at his size. My goodness. I mean, the thing about Buford is every play is like violent. Yeah. You know what I mean, there's no just, hey, nice little soft tackle. It's, no, it's a collision. There's no thudding. And they're, no, they're, they're not no thudding, thudding up. No, they're not thudding here. All right, third down, 19 yards. The ominous bells ring inside Tom Ryden Stadium. Marietta back deep in its own territory. Obviously got to be careful here. Wolves show pressure. Six right at the line of scrimmage. And here they come towards the end zone. He's got to hurry. Oh, he got a face mask. Yep. Yeah, that was easy to see in real time. Not intentional, but dangerous nonetheless. Yeah, definitely scary there. We got a player down. That I believe That's is Houston. Houston. Yeah. You don't want to see that at all. You don't want to see that. I didn't see what happened to him. So he's chasing. Okay, he's he grabs the hamstring, hamstring right yep, there. Yep. You hate to see that for yep. both guys. Once again, not intentional on Houston's part to pull that. Personal foul. Defense. 
from the previous spot. It remains third down. Not intentional on Houston's part to pull the face mask, trying to make the tackle, but obviously a penalty, and now you've got a hamstring issue that Houston's dealing with, so we'll take a timeout and hopefully give you more information when we return. Hey, is the power off on this? I don't know. Just take it off. Safety violation. Unsafe work conditions. In the construction trades unions, safety is our highest priority, and we train you to recognize and speak out on unsafe working conditions so that everyone arrives and goes home safely. Learn about careers in construction at georgiaconstructioncareers.com. The Georgia Sheet Metal JETC provides apprentices with free training and careers that are stable and essential to the operation of the modern world. Both craft jobs and management positions offer lucrative pay with benefits as well as the stability of a growing industry. Skilled journeymen in the sheet metal industry are essential to our community now and in the future. Learn more about free technical training with no student debt at our website, careersinsheetmetal.com. so many tomorrows can disappear. Buckle up for your future. Every trip, every time. A message from the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. Okay, welcome back. Let me give you an update on the injured player from a moment ago. That's Edric Houston, the defensive end. Obviously a five-star Ohio State commit, a massive prospect. Dealt with a hamstring injury, was able to leave on his own power. Rusty, seeing him walk a moment ago, Look to be dealing with a good bit of tightness there on that. Would you yeah. say that's how you would judge that? And, of course, this injury report brought to you by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. Yeah, I mean, and, and watch this play. And what I like about Edrick so much, a million things, but what he he, he did not want to be helped off the field. So yeah. He got to the sideline. He basically got everybody's hands off, and he finished walking off. Uh, you know, there got him in the tent. But as he got closer to the tent, Brandon, he started walking more and more. You could see maybe it's loosening up, and that's something they'll go take a look at. But. You hate to see anyone, but you know if you're Buford. I'm telling you, the press box right here around us, Yeah, it was a very hush-hush situation because that is a valuable, valuable player for this football team. Brian Appling told a great story about him this week that when they go visit the elementary schools, things like that, that Houston's as popular as K.J. Bolden or Dylan Riola. Yes. And these offensive kind of playmaker type guys, nice completion there going the way of Noah Brown. I had a chance to do his commitment on TV, and he called me. He said, hey, I want to do it on TV. Can we get it set up? We'll get it set up. So myself and DJ Shockley are meeting with Edric. And we said, listen, now, you got like four minutes live. He goes, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't need all that. You know, <laughs> he's like, I'm just going to say it. You know I mean? It's so different. So it doesn't refreshing. take that long to he's say all like, hey, that. I don't need four and a half minutes. I mean, he, he put me and DJ in the place like, I don't need four and a half minutes, man. I'm going to put this hat on, and I'm going to tell you where I'm going, and that's it. So the Brown catch moves the chains again. Uh, nice throw that time. Nice throw. Morgan, the coach's son, Luke Morgan, on the completion, but a uh, nice throw by Carson Snipes and perhaps providing a little bit of a spark right now for this Marietta offense. Yeah, you see him. He throws this one from the hash all the way outside of the numbers. That's a big lead throw from this sophomore. Tenth catch of the season for Morgan, almost like a hockey-style line change for Buford. High snap, though. Snipes had a hard time holding on to it, and he had to go down. There is a flag down as well. Buford may not have gotten off the field. And that will drive you crazy as a head coach. Second one, you just throw the best ball of the night, get a bad snap. So let's see what this penalty is. But you're talking about self-inflicted. I mean, you're second one. That's right. Well, it also. Illegal substitution. Defense. There we go. First down. Yeah, Buford was trying to make a lot of changes. I don't think their guys got off the field in times what happened there. But, you know, Rich Morgan's very honest. He says, hey, you know, the difference between our one and four start this year compared to a slow start a year ago was, he said, we were actually playing better while losing games a year yes, ago. He yes. feels like they've had too many kind of self-inflicted errors here this year. Whistle blows again. I don't see a flag. Got a flag Is down. a flag yep. down? Okay. Yep. Five-yard first down. Now Buford's giving Marietta a little bit of help. Back-to-back -back penalties will 
certainly be welcome relief to Blue Devils fans who now see their team inside Wolves territory. This is a Marietta team that beat a pretty good West Forsyth team. Mm -hmm. Second game, come back after losing in the Corky Kale to Norcross that morning, had a couple plays, get away from them. Similar to this game right here so far. I thought they were in that game, had a couple of balls. Snipes looks at three receivers on the right side. Pressure coming from Buver. They block it pretty well. High throw, sideline, battle for the football, and it's incomplete. Butler was the intended target. Chris Garland, though, long physical defensive back, had the coverage on that. I still like the play right here. You've got to turn this thing loose. Let's see if your guy can make a play. And he catches the ball. He just catches it out of bounds. Well, you're the analyst. I'm not. But how well do you like the fact that Garland's bodying him up right there, turning yeah, the sideline no into an extra defender? Ball skill. That seemed pretty well textbook played. Yep. Garland has a Yale offer. Coach Appling says one of those guys, though, that for this team, not many Buford players fly under the radar, but Garland perhaps is an example of one who is. I don't know if we've ever used that term, under the radar. <laughs> Snipes going to try to roll right. Going to try to throw sideline. Brown is there. Tell you what I, like about, I tell you what I like about Snipes, just seeing this first time I've seen him, you know, pocket presence. He gets out. Look, he's still down the field. Eyes still down the field. Tries to throw a little bit of a back shoulder there just to get rid of it. But like what you see of this young man right here so far. I was a little delayed in calling the incomplete. That was right in front of the Buford tent. Yes, yes. <laughs> it obscured my view. <laughs> I was having to judge the reaction of the people standing around there about whether or not that was a completed pass or not. They're coming. Third and five, running play. And he shakes free. How about the carry by Frazier there? Use a stiff arm at the end and tacks on some more yards. And that's exactly what Marietta needed. That's a nice job because Buford brought, brought the blitz. And once you break that first level, great job by 52 getting on the Buford linebacker on second level allowing that running lane big conversion right there brandon for marietta frazier's got a power five offer he's been offered by jim moore at junior in yukon and he sets up marietta here on a fresh set of downs snipes will throw through the hands of brown quick to the football were the wolves there once again osiris gilbert junior quarterback on the coverage. They just fly to the ball, man. They're so fast on deep. I, I came to practice one day, and I'm telling you, like, it was hard for the offense to run a play. Yeah. And, and, and Matt Winslow, the offensive line coach, said, hey, the good news about being at Buford is we won't face many teams as good as our defense. The bad news is I'm at Buford, and we can't get a playoff. <laughs> Snipes. Hand off to Bay. Bay bounces left side, takes a big hit. He's to the 20-yard line. Got about six that time. That's going to bring up third down. Nice job there. Been impressed with the Marietta running game. Yeah, it, it's They've been a nice kind of counter punch to what they're going to try to do through the air. We're in the red zone here, presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. They're going to go quick here. Snipes, quick hit to the sideline, and that's not going to work. Nope. Chris Garland once again flying to the football and a beautiful tackle and that forces fourth down and perhaps decision time for Rich Morgan. And for now, it looks like the offense going to stay on the field. But how about that tackle by Garland again? Yeah, he recognized him. You look and you see that trips condensed into the boundary at the top. You're thinking screen because they got two blockers in front. Almost like Kamari Lassler did last week against South Carolina. Yep. Exact same for play in formation. All right, fourth down. Marietta will go for it. Reminder, Carson Snipes, the quarterback in the game, was not the starter. Will throw to the end zone. Brown is there, but it's over his head. That's going to be a turnover on downs. Gilbert had the coverage. Brown was the target and just beyond where he could get to it. I like the play call, but Brandon, one of those things when you being a new quarterback and probably not getting the reps, those are a timing play. 
and that kind of makes those type of throws a little more difficult because you probably didn't throw the fade to the wide receiver, the number one wide receiver much of the week. Let's take a look at the uh, schedule here presented by Personal Touch Lawn Care for Marietta. Of course, we told you about the uh, start there and, and the quality of opponent they've been playing. The win against West Forsyth is certainly a good one. But obviously, when you're playing the likes of North Cobb, Walton, and Norcross, you're playing some of the very best teams in the state, Roswell included. And and they could go 4-0 the last four games. Absolutely. Ever they in the could. region. Finished second in the region a year ago, made the second round of the state playoffs, lost to eventual state finalist Carrollton. And you see that wide receiver screen. Devin Williams. Williams just a junior. Already a long offer list for Williams, whose primary position is a defensive back, but Coach Appling said, listen, this is a dynamic wide receiver, too. Yep. See how easy that was and how quick he got it. He ate up space. Just a quick toss from Raola, and then Williams just ate up turf, for lack of a better term. See Raiola there directing traffic. See him. He's calling out the defense right there. He's calling the protection. I like his size, yes. too. Yep. Got a little thickness to it. A.J. Bolden. Yeah, Bolden gets the carry. Look at that speed. Cuts back. Still on his feet. 40, 30, 25, 20. Down the sidelines. Second touchdown of the night for K.J. Bolden. Brandon, they call that night-night speed. Yep. Not many have night-night speed. K.J. Bolden has night-night speed. Takes the kind of almost like a jet sweep style handoff. Are the statisticians going to rule that a pass? I may need to see that again. I believe that is a pass. Yeah, so that is a quarterback's best friend. It is. Mario Ventura now on to try the extra point. You know, I asked Brian Appling this week. I said, coaches don't love comparisons, but to a lot of the folks who are watching this tonight, they're going to see K.J. Bolden is like what Caleb Downs was for Mill Creek a year ago. Yep. I said, do you mind that comparison? He says, I don't mind that comparison at all. A oh, guy wow. who's so good on both sides of the ball. It impact the game on both sides. We'll be right back after this, everybody. Yeah. This Saturday, ACC football on the CW continues. To the this is my moment. The Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech go on the road to Wake Forest to challenge the Demon Deacons on their home turf in a battle between two of the most high-octane offenses in the conference. Georgia Tech, Wake Forest. Saturday on Peachtree TV, Atlanta's CW. It's your journey. Own every mile in the Hyundai Tucson with America's best warranty. Lease a Tucson for $299 a month or get 2.99% APR or up to $1,500 bonus cash. Visit your local Hyundai dealer today. This is a paid advertisement for legal services. Have you or anyone you know used a drug named Ozempic or Wigovi to treat diabetes or help aid in weight loss? These drugs have been linked to severe side effects such as stomach paralysis, persistent vomiting, and constant nausea. Do you or anyone you know have any severe side effects after taking one of these drugs? If so, do not delay. You may be entitled to compensation. Visit ForThePeople.com or call the number on your screen now. Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. Do not stop taking a prescribed medication without first consulting a physician. The GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com drive for the GHSA state title is sponsored by Kroger. Boost by Kroger Plus. More savings, more benefits, a new level of membership. Dog Nation. Visit DogNation.com for the latest Georgia team news and recruiting information. Georgia's Rome, where the rivers meet and the mountains begin. The Governor's Office of Highway Safety. Seatbelts save lives. The Governor's Office of Highway Safety reminds you to buckle up before every trip. And by the U.S. Army, be all you can be. 
And there you see the man of the hour already two touchdowns on the evening. And you see the, he says he's going for that third. You saw that finger in the air right there, going for the three before it's all said and done. Two plays, 78 yards. That's our Breda Pass Management scoring summary. Kick going to be taken right there in the corner. Be careful here. Going to have to try to get out and can't get around. Butler tried to make something happen, but got knocked out of bounds around the 10-yard line. And so they're going to be backed up deep to go back on offense here. Marietta trailing 23-0 after the Bolden touchdown a moment ago. Yeah, you drive down the field. You get almost to the red zone there. You had fourth down and four. was unable to convert. It didn't take long. What, two plays, I believe? Yeah, two plays. See Devin Williams with 20 offers, KJ Bolden with 100 offers. You know, it's just, it's just, it is what it is at Buford. I mean, these kids are highly, highly recruited. Well, it and obviously we very much enjoyed that kind of stuff as yep. you see uh, Bay getting a chance to carry the ball again. Bay's had a pretty good night. It's not easy to find room to run, but he's finding what's there. And we obviously each week are so privileged to be able to broadcast so many top recruits and prize prospects. The thing that's staggering about Buford is the from the ranks of the backups or even like freshman oh, class. Yeah. Oh, you, know, yeah. you know, guys yeah. who are having a hard time getting on the field are yep. toting seven, eight, nine offers. There'll be a flag now. Knives is throwing. Butler catches it, makes a nice move. We don't know if it's going to count. But well, they uh, had a player not get off, and I don't know if Buford had a defender not get off, but I don't know if they if they had 12 or if they had 10 because they did not flag them, which means that the 11th player was off the field when he should, probably should have stayed on. Butler, you see him running off the field there, too. He took a pretty big shot. He's going to have to, I think, get some extra attention here for a moment, or perhaps he's just a little gassed. But you saw on that move why it is they want to try to get him the ball. Yeah, he has some, different, has some different speed to him. He did, and obviously that play is going to stand. And so here comes Marietta a little bit. And, and we talked about it earlier, the physicality of every play. I mean, every collision. Snap infraction, offense, five-yard penalty, first time. How about how two good teams right wow. there? Hughes we'll talk about and Douglas collisions? County. Oh, my goodness. And I, I think that, Rusty, obviously a lot of our audience is very plugged into high school football. They know how good Douglas County is. We saw yes, them sir. in the Great Atlanta Bash earlier this year. But there are tons of people that perhaps don't realize that Douglas County has got quite a roster. There is no doubt. And I'll give you a little note on that game. You know how I am about playoff bracket. How about Bainbridge on top of Ware County right now, 21-7. Brown from the backfield got back to where the ball was snapped, but Buford chasing that down. So you know how crazy I am about high school football. You kind of start looking at brackets and a few things. Yeah, you're my bracketologist. So, so. Just assume Rome wins their region, and they are a heavy favorite in that region yeah. for this year. If Rome wins that region, the loser most likely of that game will play Rome in the second round. Wow. So you could have a Rome-Douglas County game. Langston Hughes game. Butler back in the game, could not hold on, and he had Devin Williams right in his face. And incidentally, that's what happened last year when Walton ended up here as a number two yep. seed because Buford beat Mill Creek. They won the region. And in the second round, they ended up with Walton. We know that outcome. Of course, Langston Hughes also eliminated Rome from the 6A playoffs a year ago. Yeah, in the semis, yep. Hughes is probably not what they were a year ago, but they may still be the very best in 6A. Out there, they're definitely, in my opinion, still the favorite. Snipe's going to roll back right and then throw back left. He took a big hit for it, but they it sets room. up they the screen. Room. He's got room. How about this? Bay heading down the sideline. He's to the 20. He is going to go out of bounds. Ball came loose, but he was already out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. But that's a massive game for Marietta, and they're on the doorstep of the end zone. Love the play call, and I love this quarterback standing in here taking a shot, Brandon. Look, he knows he's going to get hit, and he took one. But look at Bay get up the field. Who, who walked him down here? Tyshawn White, yep, number seven. Watch White tackle the football as well. You could not Ooh, have it out executed end. a better play than that. Great More than 60 call. yards on the screen catch for Bay. We're in the red zone here, presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. Bay playing on a little bit of an ankle. He had to leave the game earlier and back in. What a courageous night for him. Like, I like what I've seen on number three. Snipes now going to throw and not able to connect with Brown. He had to rush that. He had pressure coming in. It was Ethan Irvin, the outside linebacker, who was breathing down Snipes' neck, and he had to throw it faster than he wanted to. 
And you're talking about a sore young man tomorrow, but what I have been impressed with number 18. Yeah, he's he's hung in he's there. He's taking and some shots. He has indeed. It's one of those games you tell your grandkids about. Hey, granddad started against Buford. That's exactly number one right. team in the state on TV one night. Got thrown in the got thrown into the fire against that crew. 23 nothing, but a score here changes a lot. Snipes going to have to hurry into the end zone. A lot of contact yep. flag came in. Brown applauds because he knows what it is. Appeared to be the right call. Flag KJ Bolden there coming over the top. We'll see if he got there early. Defense at the distance to the goal. Second half. You see Morgan in the Marietta offense. Milton North Cobb in quite a battle right now. Oh, gee, that's a physical football game. It is. Peachtree Ridge. How about that story? Yeah, uh, an amazing bounce back season for them. Yep. On top of Meadow Creek right now, and then a Houston County team we're going to see next week. Man, look at all that. over Warner look Robins that, right now. Man. And you, you think that means something down there in Ooh, Middle Georgia? We. You think that you think there's some bragging rights on the line with a Hoko and uh, Warner Robins right now? You see the handoff, Jalen Frazier. And a wall of wolves is there to meet him. Yeah, you don't want to go. You don't want to go sideline to sideline. You want to go north south here with this against this defense because the speed of Buford closes quickly. So third and goal now. And you almost think it's easier to find something big than it is something this short yardage. You put this Buford defense in a short field, and they're covering every blade of grass that's out there. Every, everything's compressed. Yeah, yeah, you need explosive play. They had a chance. Tyshawn Watt saved the tackle. All right, so third and goal. Snipes. Man to man. See the motion and go with him. Little flag. Look like they're trying to set up Bay for the screen on that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Richard Morgan says this week, I'm not happy because we're losing games because of fundamentals, the blocking, the tackling stuff, you know, that stuff where you just can't have those kinds of errors. There's been too much of that for Marietta this year. And this five yards is a huge difference on yes. third and goal. Yes. <laughs> All right. Snipes looking left, throwing. Bold, no, excuse me, uh, that was Devin Williams with the coverage. And that's going to bring up fourth and goal. The size of Buford secondary is really hard to do battle with. They got They're just of, so big out there. A lot of length, fast. Buford, here's one thing that's a little bit different about Buford than most places. All of their football players just about run track. Yeah. And... They are huge on that. And by the way, Edric Houston ran the 4 by 100 this year. So Cole Baumgartner going to come on, try a 27-yard field goal. It's low, and it is good, though. It does go over the upright, the crossbar. And so Marietta finds some points here, 23-3 now, with 4.50 to go in the half. And you obviously you want a touchdown there if you're the Blue Devils, yeah. but... I think you can build on that because clearly they found a spark with Snipes in the game. Yeah, Snipes has been a little bit different here. And uh, I, what I like about him is just taking some shots in the one-on-one -on -one out there. You see us right there in the press box. I'll tell you this, uh, Buford will be getting a new stadium, and that press box will look a little different than this one. Yeah, you know, there's a part of me, I like old things. I'm going to yeah. miss Tom Ryden Stadium because I've had a lot of fun nights here over the yep. years. Yep. Uh, but this new stadium they're building is going to be remarkable. $60 million. $60 million. Largest uh, video board in the United States. I think what the community will tell you is, and, and that fact alone is a staggering thing, I think what the community will tell you is, it's going to be very much in keeping with these kind of palaces you see out in Texas, places like that, yep. where kind of famous for the very big yep. high school stadiums. Yep. This is going to be kind of in keeping with that. 
probably along the lines of maybe what a Carrollton has, perhaps, maybe yep. kind yep. of in keeping with that there, too. One of the cool things about it, Brian Appling told us this week, is bigger stadium, but in terms of an atmosphere, there's not going to be a track in that stadium, and so therefore the seats will actually be a little closer to the action, so bigger stadium, but the fans may be a little bit more right on the action than sometimes they are here. Most of the older stadiums do have tracks around, and that kind of does back the fans up a little bit. Jay Calhoun does not have a track, and I'm telling you, they are right on top of you there. I love that. They are right I love on that. top of you. Davis Parrott will kick it away. This is going to be returnable. Be careful here. That's going to be Bolden. And he's going to be 30. Already two touchdowns. Going to go out of bounds around the 45-yard line. Parrott's typically pretty good for a touchback, but if you come up a couple of yards short, it gets real dangerous real fast. Yep. Let's uh, talk about some fun things happening up in Georgia's Rome right now, including uh, some of the best barbecue in the South in Cave Spring, Georgia, on Saturday, September 23rd. That's tomorrow, by the way. Enjoy the car show, arts, crafts, and food trucks. It's a wonderful festival that runs from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. But arrive early to taste the barbecue because the tasting tickets will go fast. Rusty's got about a half dozen of those for himself, I think. There's no doubt. You can find, I'm not, surprise I'm not on a t-shirt. You can find out more about the event details there at cityofcavesprings.com slash events. Got in the four-minute offense right here. Want to see this. This is probably something Buford get a chance to work on. They hadn't worked on a lot this year. And see what Raola does right here. Of course, the Georgia commit. It's going to be a running play on first down. And, man, it is room to run. Kobe Blackwell. It's worth noting, we have not seen Justin Baker carry the ball yet tonight. Yeah, that might be something. Br uh, Braden Jacobs as well, their big 6'6", junior offensive tackle with a bunch of offers is not in the game. He's out this week. And coaches told me, and that was a pancake block there by 44. And coaches told me if it was a playoff game, Jacobs probably would have played tonight. So play Collins Hill next week. Then they have a bye. Then they have the big one with Mill Creek, the big rematch for most likely the region championship. Riola now under center. Going to set up a passing play. He's got time. He's got his man there. It's a pass caught. Ty White at the 20-yard line. Pick up a 23 through the air. White's the North Carolina commit. Yeah, he got hit as he threw. The ball kind of drifted on him floated on him a little bit. It was unable to step through that one. Still a good play by White. That's been his guy so far. Yeah. KJ Bolden's in at the top of the screen. This is one on one. You might see a shot right here on first down. Already two touchdowns on the evening. See if they go motion here toward KJ Bolden. Kind of a bunch formation on the left side. Fake. Handoff by Riola, but then the ball goes straight ahead to Dylan McCoy. Riola sold the sold the play fake a little bit. You see McCoy going straight ahead. I've watched Buford so long, like like number seventy looks like the five number seventies before yeah. him. Seventy two looks like the five seventy twos in front of him. You know, it's just so there's a factory somewhere with just, these guys yeah, that's coming off the I mean, assembly just line. Plug and play, man. About to go under three minutes in our half. Buford leading 23-3, looking for more. Riola sees six across on the defensive front. Now throwing end zone. Leaping attempt, but not able to come down with it was Devin Williams. That'll bring up third down. One thing to keep in mind, though, is, you know, for Buford to have all the success, we saw multiple state championship teams honor before the game tonight. This is not the reigning state champs right now. And Correct. this last year was a team that was trying to become the first ever Georgia team to ever win a state title in every classification. Came up a little bit short. Yep. Get the sense that is extra motivation for Buford here this season. Riola under center. Going to be a handoff. Hit in the backfield. Really good play defensively. Alex Whiteside, the linebacker, the senior, comes back there to make something happen on that. They're going to go for this. Here's a chance to work. Here's a chance to work in the red zone. Fourth and seven. Got Bolden at the bottom of the screen, but they got a safety on top of him. 
Marietta shows pressure. They're bailing, so they're going to change the call. Fun little game within the game as Ryla yep. surveys all this, and it's fun to watch him go through his process. He's also not in a hurry. Play clock says eight, now five. Applin may go to call a timeout. He may have told him I want a timeout at one. That's what he did. So fun sequence there. And we were talking about this a little bit earlier. I don't know that I got a chance to finish the point. One of the things I like about Raiola, you talk about the decision making, but also when you see him standing there, this is a guy that's got some good size. You know, Brian Appling says, hey, you pat him on the back. You can definitely feel, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, beef there. This is a guy yeah. that's not by any means a thin or frail quarterback at all. Yeah, it's 6'3", and, um, you know, his, his personal quarterback trainer is Jeff Christensen, same guy that trains Patrick Mahomes and, a lot of a lot of connection between my homes and him while we have a quick moment here during the timeout let's also celebrate the fact that coming up later on in october we have the georgia high school football hall of fame the second class to be enshrined here this year one of the guys going in the late great dan reeves of course former falcons coach and uh former denver broncos coach multi-time super bowl appearance and uh, also a terrific football player there at america's high school and of course at uh, south carolina played one of the most famous pro football games of all time and a terrific coach, but also a great high school football player in Georgia. His memory will be honored and celebrated as he is enshrined in the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame as a part of the second induction class yeah. here coming up in October. It's coming up on us fast. Get, get excited about that and, and, and encourage everybody. They're going to kill a field goal. They're going to try a field goal. Yeah, so after the timeout, Buford decides to take the field goal. 27-yard attempt for Mario Ventura. The Buford cook kicking game has been good this year, but Ventura does miss that one. And so a little bit of a win for Marietta to come away with no points. They get some points. A little bit of momentum. They get Marietta. a hole. Yep. And now with 153, now keep in mind, you know, you got to be careful putting the ball in the air against this Buford defense. But if you want to be aggressive here, the two minutes, you get a chance to do that. And of course, before we find out what Marietta is going to do, we'll see the Buford schedule here presented by Personal Touch Lawn Care. Undefeated. A couple of games against out-of-state foes to begin the year. Nationally ranked St. Francis team. That's a win. First time St. Francis has been shut out in however many years. Long, Crazy. long stretch there. Crazy. Mallard Creek, one of the best teams in North Carolina. And, of course, region play here coming up for Buford. It'll see a game against former state champion Collins Hill. Mill Creek, how about that matchup on October 13th? That's going to be... A lot of fun. Nationally televised game, and that'll be a lot of eyes on that one as well. C. Snipes is limping just a little bit. You see him there with a little bit of a limp. He does have one, Rusty. Yep. That's good eyes. Yep. That's good spotting. So you want to keep an eye on that. Young man that was inserted in the game in the first quarter has done well. So he got a completion. That makes it second three. Snipes now going to look on the left side, and it's completion again. Really good job setting that one up. A good throw, and then also a good catch by the coach's son, Luke Morgan. Ran a pretty route on that. And here comes Marietta. Yeah, they're working the sidelines in this two-minute offense. But Buford's going to be content to give up a little bit more of that as we move forward. Coach Morgan saying it's fun and easy to coach your sons when they're hardworking guys. Luke, of course, not the only one of Morgan's sons on this team. Sean Morgan is a starting defensive back and also a guy that gets used to wide receiver position some, too. A little bit of a high snap. Snipes throws it, and Butler came away with it. It's amazing that he caught even, it because he was in he harm's way when he caught the football and then snuck out of there, and that actually turned into something. I don't even know how he caught that. There was so much traffic in there. I didn't know who he was throwing it to. Watch this. And there's four or five, three, four people had a chance at that. I mean, there is danger everywhere you lurk there on that. But uh, Marietta came away with it. And then back here to live action, it's Butler again. And that's going to be a good for a first down. So now we're moving the ball. We've got some timeouts left. Now you can work the entire area of the field because Buford's going to come back man to man here. About to go under one minute, but that's not a problem for Marietta here right now. And now Mary wants to call timeout and talk about it. But between the pairing of Butler and Morgan, they found something on this drive. I know he's upset. He had to call a timeout. Listen, <laughs> he had to call a timeout. He is upset with somebody on the headset because he had to call a timeout on a first down. Yeah. And that's what you do not want to do. So while we have a minute, let me also give you a shout out to our friends at Breda Pass Management because nobody wants uninvited guests taking up residence in their homes. And in this case, I'm not talking about your in-laws. I'm talking about those critters. 
When it comes to keeping critters out of your house, there's just one company to call. That's our friends at Breda Pass Management. We certainly appreciate Breda Pass Management for all it does and its dedication to Georgia high school football athletics. Football and athletics, maybe I should say. Technically, football would be athletics. Great weather night. Get a night game in Athens tomorrow night. That's exactly right. Looking forward to that. I love what Trent Dilfer said this week. Uh, yeah. Of course, first year UAB coach about the atmosphere and SEC night games. And I think that it will be equal to that tomorrow. I think it's going to be incredible. And Georgia fans haven't gotten many of these. It's been well documented. Far fewer than almost anybody else in the SEC. We're told there's nothing deliberate behind that. But, you know, whatever. Uh, but it'll be fun to see one tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the Georgia equipment social media has had a, so much fun. Well, whatever they're doing with these black jerseys or not. Lots of uh, hints out there on that. At the very least, it's a very fun Twitter oh, yeah. account oh, yeah. and yeah. Instagram account to follow because they do have a good time with that. Here's Snipes going to throw a strike towards Butler. Oh. Butler got tangled up with Osiris Gilbert, and the officials didn't like it. See if he has him with his right arm. Yeah, it's got it yeah. right there. Yep. It's a good call. Yep. Good call. Yep. Normally, because he came over the top, perfect, but you don't know what's going on with that right arm. That's a great call by the referee there. Nice job. For the previous spot. First half. Now I'm going to give Gilbert credit for this, though. He sold it very well. Oh, yeah. Like, on right. the left hand coming around when he knocked the football down, yeah, he sold he it. Like, what are y'all talking about? That was perfect. Look at it now. He's like, you got me. You got me. Little Unfortunately smile. for Gilbert, we have more than one camera out here. And a little smile on his face. A little different angle. Shows it a little different story. Right. I'll tell you what, man. If Marietta can put some points up right here. It changes a lot of things. They here. can talk about how well they played at times in this first half. That's exactly right. Snipes rolling left. Incomplete. Probably good it was. Yep. Chris Garland was locked in on that in coverage. Getting pressure as well there by Mantrez Walker. Time is still not a problem. It's 54 to it's 54 seconds in the half. It's coming up with the big play that I think is the challenge for Marietta here right now, but they've got time to do it. Gonna dump off to Bay. Bay sees a block. He gets that near a first down, but gonna be a little bit short. That's going to keep the clock yeah, moving. Got, now yeah. going under 40 seconds. Yeah, they've got to go. You see Richard Morgan, he is yelling, get on the ball, get the thing snapped. Yeah, the time ticking here. Going under 30 seconds. Snipes gets it, fakes the handoff. I don't know if that was supposed to be a handoff or that was a miscommunication, but. Yeah, they had to call timeout. Yeah. Already kind of banged up. That's not, you see him right there. He's banged. Yeah, he took a big hit. Gutting it out right now as a sophomore. So they were trying to rush up and kind of get the play because obviously time was suddenly working against them and perhaps a miscommunication between Snipes and Bay on that. And then Snipes, after keeping the football, took a big hit. So they lost 17 seconds, didn't really get anything to show for that particular play. And Snipes came up a little worse for the wear compared to what he already was. Other than that, how did you enjoy the play, Mrs. Lincoln? I guess <laughs> the saying goes. And now they're also looking at a fourth down when we come back to live action here. So the ball sits at the 29. From here, it's a 39-yard field goal. Actually, that's not right. Excuse me. And by the way, as you see the Marietta uh, cheerleaders, you'll notice those pink ribbons. We told you about this, you know, to begin our broadcast today. Obviously, in remembrance of the horrible tragedy that Marietta has suffered through, and it's a nice look to be able to see that. And we know how difficult it is. We're talking football right now, but we yeah. know how difficult this Marietta community, it is just even kind of go through the motions with all this tonight, understanding what they've been through, obviously. Time out, Buford. Second time out. And now Buford wants to call a timeout. We're in a, we're in a, what a timeout fight. Yeah, so I want to correct myself on the math here. It'd actually be too long to try right now for Marriott on the field goal. So you've got to get at least more yards to even think about that, probably. I'd say probably another 10 to give yourself a realistic shot here at a field goal, perhaps. 
you know, where we at time-wise, you know, you're fourth down and three here. You want to work the sidelines. Now, is he better rolling to the right and throwing that, that play to number one maybe again on the sidelines? Yeah, because that was what was working for them to begin the drive. Yeah, well, Buford nice was, crisp routes run by both Morgan and Butler. Well, Buford was in zone too now. <laughs> so now, now they're going to be on you press here, man to man, short yardage, understanding they want to get to those sticks. Normally, with something like this, a young quarterback, you want to roll him out, let him have a chance to run pass option. Snipes empty backfield, gets rid of it quick, and. Perhaps a step too quick. Miscommunication, and that is yeah. the part of the new quarterback there. Yeah, Butler was the intended target. Not a bad throw, just not timed well with the route that Butler was running. And Coach Morgan's bent over. He can't even talk right now. Look. I, I mean, you talk about a guy that coaches with everything that he has, and obviously, you know, he is living and dying and just sort of feeling you know, every single moment of this team in this season. And he also understands the importance of every possession on this side of the field if you want to have any opportunity. Well, keep in mind, in the midst of a one in six start last year, Marietta only lost to Buford 14 nothing last year. It was a heck of a game. So a close game with Buford a year ago, a team that was nationally ranked when the game was played and throughout the rest of the season there too, you see a little bit of a extracurricular stuff as you know both these teams hit off the field but it's one of those things where you think about opportunities missed out on and unfortunately for Marietta they're going to go to that halftime saying hey no if doubt this this and this happens we're talking about a totally different ball game 100 percent what ifs all right so we got a halftime show coming up Kaylee Manziel's got some great stuff planned for you and we think we have a really fun second half coming up too so we're happy to have you on Peachtree TV Hendrick. Drive now, pay later. Shop HendrickCars.com this month and make no payments for 90 days. Over 20,000 new and pre-owned vehicles. No payments for 90 days. Visit HendrickCars.com. Beginning the morning you opened your eyes, we spent every waking moment preparing you for the day you'd leave our nest. Whether it's driving to practice or helping with homework, it's all prepared you for what am I going to be when I grow up? Will you be ready? After much thought, I've made my decision to take my talents to the IBEW Local 613. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers is not simply a job. It's a career. Visit IBEW613.org to begin a new future today. My marriage kind of took a different path. He told me he was not moving back into the home. My biggest fear was the unknown. What would happen with the children and myself? What would happen with the house? I found Meriwether and Tharp. They told me that they would walk me through this divorce and they did that tenfold. You need an attorney. You need the best attorney and that's gonna be Meriwether and Tharp. I've used RS Andrews 15 years, purchased two heating and air systems. So I rely on their technicians for service. I call, they come. It's fixed, and I appreciate Andrew's commitment. He gives it his all. That's how R.S. Andrews makes me smile. Yankee Wawa! Running out of hot water is one way your water heater cries out for help. Call R.S. Andrews. Get a water heater rejuvenation. Your water heater gets added life. You get more hot water. Another way R.S. Andrews makes you smile today. And welcome to the Halftime Show, brought to you by Kroger. I am Kaylee Mansell with our very special halftime guests of Hendrick Automotive, Toffee Jaji and Johnny Secondo. Toffee, want to come to you first. Not the first time that we've had you up here. Got the chance to interview you guys last year. Why is high school sports and local community so important to Hendrick Automotive? Well, obviously, um, high school sports is big here in Georgia. And this is the communities that we live in, we work in. And it gives us an opportunity to be involved in something very special on a Friday night. And what an environment tonight. And being in the community is uh, very big and important to us at Edge Hendrick. Um, just the little things that we can do, whether it's food drives or being uh, at Little League uh, baseball games or high school football games, it's just important to be able to give back. Mm -hmm. And Johnny, in a heavy traffic area like Buford, there are tons of car dealerships around. What separates Hendrick Automotive from the rest? 
I think it's really our people. You know, we, we really focus on hiring the best of the best to make sure we take care of our customers. It's, uh, it's part of our culture. On top of that, we have one of the largest selections in Atlanta, over 110 dealerships across the United States. So it's just uh, the selection, the customer service, how we take care of our customers is just so important and critical to, uh, to our organization. Toffee, and speaking of customer service, what is the Hendrick advantage? Uh, it's the fact that we're able to take care of everything from parts, service, sales, uh, the ability to give phenomenal customer service, and we're going to be here for the long haul. And our uh, selection of pre-owned vehicles, new vehicles, whatever you need, we'll be able to take care of you. And Johnny, buying a car is one thing, maintaining it's another. I can speak from personal experience. What sort of services do y'all offer in regards to routine maintenance? Absolutely. So, you know, there's so many different things that we do provide within Hendrick. Uh, the 120 point multi inspections, oil changes, uh, alignments, anything that you could ever imagine, we offer it. And then the customer service side of it, we offer shuttles to the mall. We do so many things to make sure that we're taking care of our customers at all times. Mm -hmm. And Toffee, you have family ties here. Your son is a senior. How awesome is it to be able to share these Friday night experiences with him? Oh, it's phenomenal. Uh, it's a senior year. Uh, Buford's a, a pretty good team mm -hmm. this year, and uh, we look forward to just being able to cheer them on mm -hmm. uh, off the sidelines and celebrate with them at the end of the year. But go TJ, and uh, look forward to watching the rest of this game. Well, Toffee, Johnny, thank you for all that you do. I'll be getting to you guys soon about that new car that I need. But thank you for joining us. Once again, I'm sure we'll see you guys back here next year. Thank you. You're thank you welcome. for having us. We will be back with more after the break. You don't have to wake up on the right side of the bed to know how you like your coffee, as long as it's McCafe Coffee from Mickey D's. Now that's what you like. Mix and match two breakfast hits for $4.49 and any size iced coffee for $1.79. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Thank you for watching Georgia High School Heroes presented by Ingalls. I'm Chris Bainbridge, and we're counting down the best Georgia high school football players of all time. The sack man's coming. I'm your man, Dent. If the quarterback's slow, he's going to get bent. These are the lyrics to the Super Bowl shuffle as delivered by Hall of Famer and Super Bowl MVP Richard Dent. The Atlanta native attended Murphy High School, later renamed Alonzo A. Krim Open Campus High School, where he dominated in multiple sports. After his stellar prep career, Dent went on to attend Tennessee State University, and eventually to the Chicago Bears, where he would join the greatest defense of all time, the Super Bowl champion, 85 Bears. He would retire as one of the all-time sack leaders in NFL history, with 137 and a half. Thank you for watching Georgia High School Heroes, presented by Ingalls. If you've been injured, Morgan & Morgan's fee is free. If you don't win your case, you pay nothing. It's easy, just dial pound law or go to forthepeople.com to get started. I think I'm starting to get this. Welcome to this week's segment of Talking Trades. I'm Ashley Rose, once again joined by Kenny Mullins of the IBEW. Now, Kenny, you started AMPT at IBEW 613. Tell us a little bit about it and what it stands for. So AMPT is uh, Apprentices Mandate and Progress Every Day. It's for our apprentices. It gives them an avenue for their voice to be heard and to teach them about the IBEW and to make sure that our principles are followed and just gives them an actual sounding board to be able to discuss anything they want to discuss. So you're helping apprentices advance in the trades? Yes. So AMPS uh, originally was created to allow specialized training. So we're in construction, but also there's a different avenue that some of our workers and people want to take, and that's to be on the management side, estimating, mm -hmm. building information, which is BIM, uh, project management, uh, things of that nature that they don't get through our apprenticeship program, AMP will offer that for them if they choose for no cost. That's amazing. Yeah. So how do these AMP events help bring people together? So the events that we host together uh, brings in our apprentices that are currently enrolled into our apprenticeship program. And we do 
team building things at the actual events. We do cookouts, we have food trucks, we have ice cream truck, we'll do some type of event. Uh, usually we play bean bag toss, cornhole, uh, just to get together and just get to know each other. Because we're a big business. We got 5,170 people. So anytime we can network and, and show solidarity and, and show that we have each other's back, that's what we do at these events. And it's a great turnout. The energy is unbelievable. The generation coming up now is such full of such great energy and union minded mm -hmm. and, and hard workers. So it's just a time to really admire them and, and help them and give them whatever they need. Now it's great uh, for them to be with the team and to meet everybody and, 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 and have that teamwork aspect. But what about um, the importance of giving back to the community? I know that's huge for IBEW. Yeah, that is a major factor. Again, it falls into our principles. We want to be a presence in the community. We want to help people. And everybody that's involved in AMP, they understand that. And they're on board with doing whatever we can do in the outreach of the community. You know, it may be uh, helping shut-ins, you know, build a, a, a wheelchair ramp or different things like that. We just want to make a difference and, and help people uh, in the surrounding communities and here in Atlanta. That's what we do. We, we care about people. Well, Kenny, thank you so much for joining us on today's segment of Talking Drades. You can always find out more at IBEW613.org. We'll see you guys next week. Great teams are committed, focused on the details, and work hard to be their best. From practice to games, right down to their gear. Your field is a critical part of the game that allows your athletes to showcase their athletic abilities. Sports Turf is committed to bringing your team innovative sports surfaces with unparalleled performance. You bring the vision. Our team brings it to life. A journeyman with Local 85, when you turn out, you can be hitting six figures. Hey, I have your back, you have my back. We're going to do this together. We're, we're one for all, all for one. College just wasn't for me. Let's look into actual career jobs that wouldn't take college where I wouldn't, you know, lose money and all that. Instead of losing a lot more money at the end, why not make money and make more money at the end? What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. And welcome back, everyone. Before we take a look at the scores tonight, let's have a look at the Buford Band brought to you by Meriwether and Tharp. Craig Sager, Craig at the half, Buford leads Marietta 23 to three. I think we can all agree the star on the field tonight has been KJ Bolden, two touchdowns already, and he's a safety realistically. Yeah, number one athlete I think in the country. He's just explosive, he's gotten it done every single week for them. Not surprised, he's having a huge year. I know Buford's had a lot of uh, special players come through, but he's really making a name for himself. And I think coming into this game, everybody knew that on paper, Buford has all the tools that it needs to win a state championship. Are they living up to expectations? Yeah, I mean, they just look comfortable out there, confident. They had the one turnover. 
I think what impresses me most about Dylan Rayola, seeing him in person, though, it's his size. And he made some throws. He's done it actually all season long where it looks like you're going to take him down, and then he just knows where all his receivers are. He has so much strength. And so I think that's what makes him an exciting college-ready prospect. And it's been fun to see him in person. And Marietta gets the ball to start the second half. We'll see if the Blue Devils can punch it in. And just like college football tomorrow, there are some awesome, awesome games going on in the state of Georgia tonight. So let's take a look at our scoreboard brought to you by Score Atlanta. Here we've got our first set of scores. Colquitt leading Cedar Grove 36-21. Cedar Grove plays an absolutely insane non-region schedule. Another game I was really curious to see was Grayson versus Lowndes. Obviously, former head coach for Grayson, Adam Carter, made the decision to go to Lowndes this past year. I wanted to see how that matchup played out. What sticks out to you, Craig? Oh, that Grayson result, that's a statement. And then just yeah. thinking about their region, I think they have a matchup coming up with Newton soon. I think it's next week, actually. Newton's undefeated. You throw Parkview in there. Brookwood's starting to come together. Archer, that's going to be a ridiculous region, I think, even the number four seed coming out of there. But a huge statement for the Rams. And then you mentioned Cedar Grove. How, how do you like going from Mill Creek to at Colquitt County back-to-back -back weeks? So uh, they're fighting. They're getting better. And shout-out to Perry as well. They, they look outstanding. Their only loss was to Houston County week one. Looking at our next set of scores, I do believe that the first one, North Cobb Milton, is not quite accurate. If I'm right, you have the score on that, don't you? Yeah, 35-24, North Cobb is pulling away. They have such a good ground game, and I've got to think that that's been the difference in that second half. Uh, Houston County looks exceptional against Warner Robins, and then Peachtree Ridge, they're going to have two weeks off after this. They're undefeated, and then they're going to play North Gwinnett in region play. But Darnell Kelly, sophomore quarterback for Peachtree Ridge, he's now leading 7A in passing this season. But when you look at that scoreboard right there, the one that jumps off the page is Douglas County in Hughes, only a three-point deficit. That might be the closest anybody has played Hughes this far this season. Even Carrollton didn't play them as close as Douglas County. I know. I've been trying to get an update. I know they did stop Hughes on a turnover on downs before the half to keep it within three. Three. We will see what happens at the end of that one. And then Brunswick, Glen, Glen Academy, a great rivalry game down in the coast. Moving forward for our next set of scores, Blessed Trinity looking to bounce back after a tough loss to Marist last week and Cedartown over Dalton 21-12. Uh, Cedartown and Dalton are just in one of those regions that just it absolutely breeds talent every year. It's always wide open. What else stands out? I think Bainbridge, uh, we saw Benedictine, the Class 4A team, beat Ware County a few weeks ago. Bainbridge is another highly ranked 4A team going against the defending champs, number one ranked Ware County. They actually went up 28 to 20, sorry, 28 to 14. Ware County just cut it within a touchdown, though. So it's 28 21. That one's coming down to the wire. Jefferson looks outstanding. And then Cedartown, they've had some trouble the last few weeks, but Dalton's a great team in 5A, so that'd be a huge win for the Bulldogs. And we are back. As you can see, we have so many great games going on in the state of Georgia tonight. If you want to see scores for your favorite team, you can check out the scoreboard at scoreatlanta.com. Always updating them. And then, of course, after the game, Craig and I will break it all down for you. Well, thanks, guys, for joining. We've got so much more coming up right after the break, so stay tuned. Did you know that Ingalls sells more organics than any other store? Or that they run their own dairy? Or that they only serve USDA choice and prime meat? Did you know that they have more local craft beer than any place else? Or that they have energy smart stores? Or that they professionally slice and package imported cheese from Europe? Did you know about their giant international aisle, local farm partnerships, curbside pickup, wine department? Or that they donate 3,956 meals a day to local food banks? Well, now you do. It's all in the bag. Ingles, low prices, love the savings. You don't have to wake up on the right side of the bed to know how you like your coffee, as long as it's McCafe Coffee from Mickey D's. Now that's what you like. Mix and match two breakfast hits for $4.49 and any size iced coffee for $1.79. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Rev up, chow down, right on at the 2023 Superior Plumbing Presents North Georgia State Fair September 21st through October 1st at Jim R. Miller Park in Marietta. Visit NorthGeorgiaStateFair.com for more information. You coming?
Volkswagen Taos. German engineering everyone can get into. Get 3.9% APR financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Taos S or lease one for just $2.29 a month. Morgan & Morgan is not only America's largest injury law firm, we're also the only injury law firm in the world with lawyers licensed in all 50 states. With dedicated attorneys focused on personal injury, medical malpractice, insurance disputes, and many others, we have a 30-year track record of getting results for clients just like you. So wherever you are, whatever you need, our firm is ready to take your call. There's only one Morgan & Morgan for the people. And welcome back, everybody. Brandon Adams, Rusty Manziel here in the press box, the broadcast booth, Tom Ryan Stadium, where Buford has a 23-3 lead over Marietta. But I'm very curious, Rusty, to see our halftime stats presented by the Manic Mechanical Trades Institute. I have a sneaking suspicion that the yardage imbalance may not be quite as bad as the big score imbalance suggests. In fact, why don't we take a look at these halftime stats? Uh, you see both teams even on the rushing yard. My suspicion was true. Obviously, Buford does have the yardage lead, but, but not by a, a, a wide total there. You look at two, two stats here, two turnovers, but Marietta with 11 first downs. And they've had the ball inside the 25, Brandon, three times. That's exactly right. Now, the caveat to all that is, is Buford has used big plays on defense to Correct. short field. So, yep. you know, perhaps that is, in a way, a little bit of a misnomer. But it speaks to what I think we saw in the face of Marietta coach Rich Morgan going to the half. He felt like his team had its chances. It clearly did. Just not able to capitalize on those. A total of 11 first downs, though, really pretty impressive. Now, speaking of impressive, the highlights, you're going to see some outstanding plays here, including one of the most amazing throws you'll ever see. And in fact, why don't we check, take a look at these halftime highlights presented here by Ford. Now, we'll start off with a big play on defense. You saw K.J. Bolden, Edrick Houston converge there on the receiver and then scooping it up and taking it in for a touchdown was Bryson Banks, the linebacker. And that's how the Wolves got on the board first. But how about this throw by Riola? I mean, my goodness. Diving catch by Devin Williams is really nice there, too. Then Riola sets up the screen, but then the ball comes free, and that was the first big defensive play for Marietta. Yeah, you see you see, McCravey kind of forced one in right there, and after that play, they made a quarterback change to the sophomore snipe. C.J. Sibley had the interception. K.J. Bolden had the first of his two touchdowns on that reception. And then Marietta got a little something going offensively with Jalen Frazier in the running back spot. But then it was K.J. Bolden. We'll call this a jet sweep reception. You know that looks like right there? That's Miko Hardman. It does look a lot like Hardman. I, I can accept that. We talked about the Caleb Downs comparison a little earlier. Yep. Uh, Hardman's a pretty good uh, comparison, too. He the is. explosive athleticism. The ability to start and stop and get into, to get into fifth gear. All right, so we're going to take one more time out. You see us nestled right here in our broadcast position. We're eager to show you the third quarter action, but we've got to pay a bill or two before we get there. So stay with us here on Peachtree TV and streaming with Atlanta News First. Man, you know how to do this? Man, I don't even know. I was flipping burgers last week. Violation, unsportsmanlike conduct, impersonating a craftsman. Skilled trade unions are well-trained career pros, not part-timers. Construction is a rewarding and lucrative career with the advancement potential, but you have to do it the right way with the right training. Learn how you can be a pro. Find your career at georgiaconstructioncareers.com. Planting season is here, and it's time to get your yard looking its best. So treat your yard to the perfect touch from the professionals at Personal Touch Lawn Care. Mowing, maintenance, design, and construction. Personal Touch Lawn Care does it all. If my yard is taken care of, it's one thing off my list that I don't have to worry about. Sign up now for monthly maintenance and get the 12th month free. Big enough to serve you, small enough to know you. Personal Touch Lawn Care, 770-908-1238 or online at ptlcatlanta.com. America, it's time to gear up and get out there in a new Ford vehicle. And it all starts at your local Ford dealer during the Discover Summer Sales Event. Choose from a great selection of trucks and SUVs equipped with the tech and comfort you need to discover your best summer ever. With a large inventory in stock, now is the best time to trade in, trade up, and discover summer with Ford. Now get 2.9% financing for 60 months plus up to 4,500 cash back on select Ford SUVs. See your local Ford dealer and discover your best summer ever. 
The try for the GHSA state title is presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. Transform your future today. And you see the Buford cheerleaders there, and they've got lots to cheer about. 23-3 is our score. Wolves on top of Marietta. Third quarter action about to get underway. Marietta did win the toss to begin the game, deferred their choice, so they're going to get the ball now to begin this second half. And you see a look at the Blue Devils, white uniforms, that big. We've seen some good uniforms. We have seen some good uniforms. I, I do like this look from Marietta. Both teams tonight. I like it. Good classic thing. And you see a nice contingent of students here on hand on the uh, Buford side there as well. Kind of going patriotic. I have to admit, maybe this is a signal that I'm getting old, but I never understand the theme that the student sections dress in. Yes. I, but it's always a thing. Yes. Like, why is it Patriot? I guess it's military night. That's military night. Yeah, yes. that, that's what it is. The, obviously, and I'll tell you what. I don't know if we got a camera, but there's a young man who has the Rocky Balboa robe, like his boxing gloves. Like, I do like that. I mean, they're going all out. Hey, look at that. I mean, that's that's. So it is military, military appreciation night, yeah, night correct, here, yeah. here at Buford. So that makes the yeah. patriotic motif of the students make more sense but we'll see like the such a refreshing because we saw nine different neons last year a lot of Neon that night. we've seen a lot of like the jimmy buffett style like yep. tropical Little theme pair, uh, this yep. year the parrot head stuff uh, we've seen some you know what do you call it like combat fatigues or you know hunting camo we see a lot yep. of that when we were younger i think student section you just sort of came as you were you didn't necessarily have the theme uh, yes yeah, there was no social media, so you came and kind of at times kind of misbehaved a little bit in the student section there every and said and some things. and Every now and then. Yep. Mario Ventura will kick this ball off, and it goes into the end zone. And that's where Marietta will get it first and 10 from the 20 to begin the third quarter. Breda Pest Management score ticker continues to roll on. How about Jefferson on top of Clark Central right now, 22-7. Battle there in the Athens area. Congratulations to Sammy Brown, Clemson commit. He earned his five star on on3.com this week and good for him. Yep. Great player. A very good player. Yep, really. A linebacker in college, but a really good player on both sides of the ball for no Jefferson. Doubt. No doubt. And I, while we're tossing out some congratulations, the 2025 tight end from Alpharetta High School, Ethan Barbour committing to Georgia today. Yeah, big gift for Todd Hartley. You see Bay there on first down getting a carry. Got a text from someone said Todd Hartley was at the Alpharetta game tonight. So. Good. That's good to know. Montrez Walker comes over and makes the stop. Yeah, Hartley's always working about a year ahead on his recruiting. It I, mean, seems like. I mean, he is. He takes care of business in one class, moves on to the next one. It's Snipe snagging at quarterback, and he's going to go down. And he's brought down by James Marrow. That's a sophomore defensive end that's already drawing comparisons to Edrick Houston. Yeah, James Morrow is someone that came up and played in the Georgia Elite Classic. He's already got offers. And this is just where a young quarterback, that 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 clock's got to go off in your head. I got 1,003 yeah. to get rid of this because I'm not going to outrun the Buford defense. Yeah, so Morrow has a impressive pass rush opportunity there. And... As I said, there's some Edric Houston I mean, comparisons I mean, already being made. I mean, you have a five-star come out. But, oh, by the way, your next young guy that comes in has got about ten offers already. Yeah, already. Yeah. Already. See if they come back this third. This is very dangerous play here. Third and 18. Be careful. Setting up the screen, and it's not going to go anywhere. Bay slammed hard to the turf. Big tackle once again by Montrez Walker. What a sequence he's had on this drive alone. Montrez Walker sent me a DM today. He said, Mr. Mantell, you, are you calling our game tonight? I said, yes. Yeah. I'm putting on a show. So, so far, he is holding up his end of the bargain. Three-star recruit. Bunch of offers for him, too. Just recently decommitted from Michigan. Opened his recruitment back up. So, a fun player to have here on the open market as the 2025 class starts to take a little bit more shape here. The punt by Davis Parrott be fielded and room to run inside the 30-yard line. Ty White got ahead of steam and got inside the 25. Unfortunately, we're going to see the young man that just came in right there. I believe that's James Morrow. He was being helped off the field. Oh, you hate to see it. Yeah, I mean, just came in. And you see, that's Edric Houston in the black right there helping him. Okay. Yep, yeah, so, so Houston, who left earlier with a hamstring I, injury. 
the way they're holding him, he might have got his his bell rung. Okay. For lack of a better term, there. I mean, that's the old school rusty in me, but players around him trying to help him to the bench. You see the coaching staff, but you see Edric Houston in street clothes, and he looked to be walking a lot better, though. Did seem to be perhaps only out for precautionary reasons. Morrow we'll try to keep our eye on, too. You know, keep in mind, that's a couple of names in this defensive line we're subtracting yep. off. Yep. And know, they play Collins Hill next week now. That's a handoff on first down. Not much happening there. Aiden Canty, one of the guys in on the stop again. See, well, he's played well tonight, both sides of the ball. He has. Looking at 9.30, third quarter. Riola not in a hurry. McCoy is the back off to his left. K.J. Bolden, that'll be the receiver alone left side of the formation, which is the bottom of your screen. Got numbers at the bottom. That's going to look his way. Bolden could not quite make a man miss. Jalen Frazier there to work Bolden out of bounds, and that's going to bring up third down. Very cool moment for Marietta. I got a chance to talk to Rich Morgan before the game. We talked about Aziz Ojolari and B.J. Ojolari playing against each other last week. The Arizona Cardinals played the New York Giants. Those two brothers got so to fun. walk out on the field together. That's a really fun thing. And, you know, obviously we pay very close attention to Georgia football. You know, I think it's hard to overstate how good of a player Aziz Ojolari was oh in Georgia. Unfortunately, his last year came prior to the two national championship seasons. Yep. It can be easy to forget that, but Aziz was, A, a terrific player here at Marietta and a wonderful player at Georgia. You're talking about a great family. I got a chance to meet them covering those two young men. And I mean, you want to talk about five-star family. Hard yards and five-star type yards for Dylan McCoy. That's going to move the chains for Buford. Here's a fun thing to ponder about uh, Ojolari. How many individual players have had a better single game than he maybe had against Cincinnati in that Peach Bowl? You oh know, my goodness, that, that last play? 2020 season. The last play of the game, the sack on, on Desmond Ritter. Yeah, who's now the starting quarterback of the Falcons. We are in the red zone here, presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. Saw the Buford band. Appreciate GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com, of course, being not just part of our red zone, but a part of the entirety of our coverage here. All season long. I'll take a shot on first down. Whistle blows. It was going to be a handoff to Kobe Blackwell. Here is a play. Ball start. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. So that's going to back up Buford. See a look there at Riola. A lot of social media, of course, buzzing about the throw that he made in the first half. Yep. Uh, I think that'll be a highlight type play that you and I both remember. Almost down on a knee. Now, he wasn't down, but he was going almost down on one knee. Threw it. Williams, Devin Williams, makes a, an incredible diving catch. But the strength of Riola, first of all, not to be put on the turf, and then to release the ball with as much strength and accuracy as he did, it was an amazing And thing. he actually threw it like the only place his receiver could catch it nobody else could get to, which was crazy. Riola pumps, now looking left, makes a man miss, shows some elusiveness with his feet. How about this? Now going to throw it away, and it's wide open. And not able to hold on to it, though, was Bolden. So people have asked questions about the footwork and the ability to move around in the pocket for Riola. He showed some of that there but not able to connect with K.J. Bolden. Bolden's, Bolden's saying, I couldn't see. I got the lights. See him get it. <laughs> Listen, they got a smile on his face. The lights got me, man. Lost it in the lights. <laughs> yeah, that's the question. And you, listen, you, you start nitpicking things because you have to. When you start evaluating five stars and those types of things, does Dylan Riola have the ability to move around enough in the pocket because he has a tremendous arm? He's got tremendous IQ. Where's his footwork on those types of things? And it's not concerning. It's just there's, there's Brandon, you start separating a few little things as a value. And I'm Offense, just telling you, talking five to people, yard penalty, that's kind of the, the last remaining question on him. Yeah, and, and it's a different kind of evaluation when you're talking about someone who has the potential of being the number one overall player in the country. And yep. by the way, you don't see this on, on, on the camera right now, but there is another Buford player being taken into a tent. So this is becoming a little bit of a 
costly game for them, at least in terms of yeah. injuries right now. I can't get my eyes on. I think that was maybe. 72. Okay, yes, yeah, so that's Devin Forrester. That's a pretty important offense. That's a starting right tackle. That's a 6'4", 280-pound senior. One of the real anchors of this offensive line, so trouble there. Complete to Kobe Blackwell. Blackwell shows some toughness, man. He gets down to the 7-yard line. 15 on the reception to Blackwell. You know, we got in that game last year against Walton, and we both have talked about that so much that we just didn't feel like Buford was comfortable passing the ball down. Mm -hmm. They got down two touchdowns, and it wasn't their game. So if something like that were to happen, that's the difference this year with 15, Dylan Raiola. And he's taken all of the snaps. You're not splitting quarterback reps. Remember Dylan Wickey that's right. and Ashton Daniels, who both went on to play that's you know, right. major college football. But Raiola has taken every snap so far and likely will continue. On third down, pressure coming on Raiola. Hit as he tried to throw it. Ball came free. Offensive lineman fell on that. And are they going to rule that? A fumble or an incomplete? I, I, they must be saying it's a it's a fumble. Yeah, they might be saying it's a fumble. Yeah, so Raiola was hit. That's one you want to see him tuck and get up the field. Just go ahead and get up the field. Get what you can. Rule that a fumble. Yes, they did. Almost seemed like his it's a bang bang type play. Almost yeah, seemed like yeah. his arm could have been coming forward. Yep. You know, ultimately, it probably doesn't matter a ton in terms of the overall down and yardage. Buford going to quickly hurry up the line here. This is fourth down. They can get a first down. Clock's running five seconds. Yeah, under inside five on the play clock. Riola, the handoff. Up the middle goes McCoy. And on the spot he's going to be like right there so close. It's going to depend on the spot, right? Yeah, yeah, and they're going to say that Mary has gotten to stop here. So the Marietta defense has had a couple of these they down inside hard. deep yes, their own have. territory where they've allowed themselves to get off the field without yielding any points. And now they look to build on that with some offensive momentum. You see our satellite truck in the background, and you see the Buford sideline in the foreground, and we got a kind of a fun second half brewing here. So we're happy to have you with us on a Friday night. We'll be right back. wake up on the right side of the bed to know how you like your coffee as long as it's McCafe coffee from Mickey D's now that's what you like mix and match two breakfast hits for $4.49 add any size iced coffee for $1.79 ba -da -ba -ba -ba. at Ingles we're proud to partner with area athletics from little league to the pros college tournaments to high school heroes it's all in the bag he could go all the way yeah! Ingles low prices love the savings this summer is the best time ever to own a Jeep Grand Cherokee from Ed Voiles Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Right now, Ed Voiles has over 200 brand new Jeeps on the ground for you to choose from. And right now, during the Jeep Adventure Days, you can take as much as $12,000 off on your new Jeep. That's right, up to $12,000 off. This month, all the 2023 Jeeps must go. So right now at Ed Voiles, you will see nothing but our lowest possible price. Only at Ed Voiles Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Cobb Parkway, Marietta. The GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com drive for the GHSA state title is sponsored by the Mechanical Trades Institute, the best kept secret everyone should know about. Smart Local 85, sheet metal is a smart move. Gatorade, fuel tomorrow. The Georgia Sheet Metal and Air Conditioning Contractors Association. Careers in SheetMetal.com, building a solid future. The Atlanta Falcons, rise up dirty birds. And by the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office. Together, we can make a difference. 
We are back and getting to it here. Marion with the football, but deep in their own territory. Bay gets the first down carry and gets himself a couple. And so Blue Devils got the stop on Buford. And now it looks like Bay is going to have to. And he's tried to gut it out. Yeah, he, he, had an ankle, he had an ankle injury earlier. And I don't know if that's the same ankle or not. I believe it probably is. And he's going to come over here and get tended to as well. We've seen players really leaving both sides here. It's, it's almost reminiscent of a, a physical football yeah, game. It's almost reminiscent of like one of those summertime games where, you know, you've got the, the cramping, except in this case it's not cramping. Yes. These are actual injuries. That's a pass caught to Butler, and that sideline route has worked. Yeah, they've worked the sideline a lot. And I'll tell you this, the Snipes have a big-time arm. So far, it doesn't show a lot of that, but he's a great ball distributor. Gets the ball out. He finds the open guy. Can we talk about Bobby Butler for a minute? Because yes. Butler didn't play a year ago ACL injury and really doesn't have much in the way of college offers yet, I think because he missed all of last year. But yep. I've seen some playmaking skills from him tonight. I agree. You get the sense this TV game could be something that maybe jumpstarts his Ooh. college recruitment. Boy, Buford is tough. I mean, every play is a is a is just a collision. That man. was Nico Maggio who's in the backfield. And we haven't called his name probably tonight, but that doesn't mean he hasn't had a uh, great uh, – game he eats space there in the middle the big nose man a big part of this Buford defensive line so now looking at second 11 trying to connect with Morgan similar route to what's worked with him before but he wasn't able to hold on and he was in traffic as it was. Yeah, they said on that when they played zone that time, so it wasn't open. So that corner, that's his area. He wants to sit down in there, just to, just trying to confuse the young quarterback a little bit. You see the Georgia commit, Jaden Perlotti. He's fired up and trying to get everybody else fired up around him. One of the guys that was in coverage on Morgan that time. Now third and 11. Let's see if they bring pressure. There. They're showing it. Here they come. Going to have to hurry. Gets rid of it over the head of Butler. Tough. You're back there. You know, you got the Buford Knight behind you in your own end zone. Man, they showed blitz and they dropped and they came from a zone. And the middle linebacker actually won it came. It's a great pickup by the running back. But just, just watching the collisions right there, Brandon. Cool. They're just so fit. Three's a, three is a sophomore. Yeah, I mean, he's a sock. If he was in Georgia or UAB gear tomorrow, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even difference. think of wouldn't know anything about it. Yeah, talking about Bryce Perry White, big time player, man, big time. Parrot gets the punt away. That's going to be fielded. White going to go down near the 33 yard line, and it's good field position again for Buford and. The question asked for Marietta is, you know, kind of keeping their team in the game defensively, can they do that again? And unfortunately, you see James Morrow continue to be tended to there. Um, yeah, I think he took a really big shot. Didn't see it, but you could see he was kind of woozy walking off. See his dad there. He uh, played Georgia League Classic last year. Got a chance to meet him. He's another big-time prospect, so hoping the best thing for him to get back. We will wish him well as he's going to go back and get some medical attention, and then we'll be right back as well. What's so great about being a Kroger Boost member? Free delivery on the Kroger products you love and more rewards too, like double fuel points on everything you buy. Experience a new level of membership starting as low as $59 a year with Boost by Kroger Plus. Learn more at Kroger.com today. Are you 18 years of age or older? 
become a star. The Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office is now hiring for deputy sheriff with a signing bonus up to $4,700. They also have civilian and trades positions available. If you are interested in a career with the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office, visit GoGCSO.com to learn more about compensation, incentives, benefits, and areas where you can start your career today. Are you ready to rise to the call? Join GCSO today and become a star. Okay, we are back. Buford has the football in Marietta territory. 4.32 to go, third quarter of play. Up 20, looking for more. Blue Devils defense doing a pretty good job keeping their team in the game. And uh, Kelvin Shaw, linebacker, has had a great season. Yep. And a good game tonight. Comes over, makes a big hit. Blackwell was on the carry, but Shaw met him hard. Yeah, just go basically just an outside zone there, and Marietta fights through it. Doesn't get much, maybe a yard or so. But set top. Riley going to roll right side. Not able to connect, though. Try to hit his tight end, Hayden Bradley. That's going to bring up third down. Can Marietta do it defensively again? They may only be hanging on by a string, but they are hanging on. Yep, I'm telling you, I've seen some crazy things happen with games like this. These two teams played a year ago. Buford won 14 nothing. It was a game that Marietta could have won, perhaps giving it some confidence here tonight, obviously playing against the state's number one team. You see Ryle on third down. Pressure coming for him. He's going to have to hurry now. He's going to be dragged out of bounds. So that's going to bring up fourth down as he goes out of bounds around the 29. Yeah, that's been a problem for Buford like most of the year, having prob having time protection on him. See, Demary Tony, good defensive lineman. I'm going to try a long field goal. Yeah, this will be a long one now. This is going to be 46 yards for Mario Ventura. He's a good kicker. Let's see if he can connect on this. It's going to be a low, short kick, though. So that one's no good. And Marietta has stood up defensively again. And you're left to wonder. A, is Bay the running back healthy enough to go back in? And B, can they get the play that gives them a chance to change this game? And we'll find that out in a moment. But let me also remind you about what's happening right now in Rome, Georgia. You can visit Cave Spring, Georgia for the 6th Annual Georgia Mushroom Festival and Music Jam from September 30th through October 1st. It's a three-day event that combines mushroom, education, art, food, and music. You can get event details online at cityofcavespring.com slash events. Rusty, I heard you like to go to the Mushroom Festival a lot when you're in college. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I liked it on my, uh, my Gumby's Pizza. <laughs> Got a text from our producer and the president of ScoreAtlanta.com. Uh, ScoreAtlanta.com, president of Corky Kell, co-chairman, Corky Kell Classic, I.J. Rosenberg. He said, Rusty, Monday afternoon, major announcement on Score Atlanta and Atlanta News First. Oh, wow. And I'm going to quote this. I.J., who's been in the business a long time, says, Rusty, this Monday afternoon news break will rock the Georgia high school football world in this state. My goodness. He's what a got, tease. I mean, he didn't tell me. What a tease that is. Incomplete, by the way, bringing up third down. So Monday afternoon, look for a big announcement in high school high school world in the state of Georgia. So My goodness. He didn't tell me either. I'm going to have to. Hit the bat channel, I guess. If we Boy, can find I know out what's it. Going yeah. on. Rumor mill. I have to go to the message board, sort of figure out what's going on. I'll stir it up tonight. All right, third and ten. Three down lineman for Buford. Good protection. Throwing pass caught. Ooh, Ooh. what a hit by KJ Bolden. Mm. I mean, is he something else? Canty caught it, but he took a Big hit from KJ, and I hope he's okay. Great protection there, too. Allow him to get this ball off, but you're going to see Bolden. Look at the protection there. Good job. 
Yeah, they had it blocked up well. I like how he gets up the field. He just unfortunately runs into that. And it's a clean hit, shoulder low. They got him off sides. How about this now? Yep. So. Encroachment, defense, penalty, first down. So Canty, who took the hit, by the way, a moment ago, is now going to come out of the game. Uh, we've seen a lot of players on both sides have to go to the sidelines because of the sheer physicality of physical it. Physical football game. But that's burying the lead because the penalty on Buford gives easy convert. A, a, an easy conversion for a first down for Marietta. Yeah, we're putting uh, that's James Morrow. Yeah, James Morrow wishing him the best, and I think he just really took a shot. Man. Yeah, hopefully for just precautionary reasons there. You see the Snipes pass incomplete, but hopefully that's out of an abundance of caution. You assume yep. that's probably what it is. Yep. And a physical game, man. It has for, been for both teams. And I'll tell well, you this, these teams now, have played have played so hard too. Look I mean, at, you look at Edric Houston, who is out of uniform, and I saw the his thigh is, is wrapped up. Bay, who's had a couple of injuries tonight that he's dealt with, he's back in the game, and he gives pretty good carry there on second down. That's going to make third a lot more manageable. Yeah, so if you're Buford, you know you're always going to get everyone's best shot. This game means a lot to Marietta because they're eager on TV to prove they're better than their record suggests. And then, you know, Buford obviously wants to play its best every Friday there, too. Snipes to Butler. Butler is not going to get free there, and he's driven hard out of bounds. Physicality stretching beyond the white lines there with Ty White making a nice tackle. So that's fourth down. You probably have to go for it here, or yeah, if you, yeah, you got to. You went yeah. for it. You went for it <laughs> three plays ago. It's time to go for it. Yeah, that's a good point. That's exactly. Yeah, that's a great point, actually. Snipes tried to draw him off. Had a had a hard count move, and Buford flinched, but didn't jump. Play clock now shows five, and now. Rich Morgan, the Marietta coach, going to call timeout. I'm out, Marietta. That's their first timeout of the half. We talked about this game earlier. Langston Hughes was down 23 to 20. Four minutes to go. Prentice Air Nolan with a 38-yard touchdown pass. It's now 27-23 with three minutes to go. Exciting uh, game playing out there. And speaking of exciting, about the Atlanta Falcons off to a 2-0 start to the season. And group ticket packages are available right now for Falcons home games. You can learn more about options for youth sports teams, client hosting events, and more when you check out atlantafalcons.com slash tickets. What is Falcons football? It's Grady putting quarterbacks on notice. It's Kyle shredding defenses like a unicorn. It's Tyler breaking tackles like bone screens. It's AJ locking down anyone on his island. It's Drake touching the sun. It's ZP breaking another record. What is Falcons football? It's all you dirty birds. Rise up. And we are back. 2.09 to go, third quarter of play. Marietta staring at a fourth down situation here. They've had two big stops in a row defensively, resulting in no points for Buford. But they got to convert here. Going to be a deep throw by Snipes. Butler is there. Did he come up with the catch? Yes, he did. He did at the 30-yard line. 40 yards on the strike from Snipes to Butler. And he's down. Great job right there. They go slot fade. He throws back shoulder, and what about this sophomore? He just throws it up. And Perlate in coverage just, just, just able, unable to pick the ball up, and he delivers a strike right there. Nice yeah. job. The receiver on the linebacker, Perlate's a great player, but that's probably a matchup that, you, that Marietta doesn't mind. Went right to it. Good protection again. Snipes again. He's come in. 
Keep in mind, he was not the game's original starter, but he has come in and he has provided quite a spark for the Blue Devils. No throw better than one he just made. And you're noticing Buford's not getting as much. Andrew Houston out, James Morrow out. They don't have the depth right now. I don't see Bryce Perry right either, number three. He's not in the game either right now. So you're, you're deep into two reserves and Marietta's finding time right now. And Coach Appling told us before the you know game this week that they're pretty banged up right now, but all coaches always say that, to be frank. And yet, in the case of Buford, it does seem like really on both lines of scrimmage, they really are. Ooh, that was a thing. Oh, did, did Buford come up with that? I believe they did. They did. You had a chance there on that. Marietta did, but instead it's going to turn into an interception for... Was that Banks that came up with that again? The like linebacker a, tips it. Watch the ball crosses the middle right there. Number 11 tips it and yeah, seven so gets it. Yeah, it's White who comes up with the interception. And Banks. Banks, who had a fumble recovery for a touchdown earlier, gets the deflection that turns in the interception. Great job cutting that route off, going underneath to get that in that lane and tipping it. Samaj Anderson, the freshman wide receiver, had a chance to come up with that. It was a route that gave Marietta an opportunity, but Buford, when they get hands in the air defensively, they're just really hard to deal with, and that's at least the second big play of the night for Banks. North Cobb is going to beat Milton. How about that? That's in some shockwaves. We saw Milton earlier this season and went against Roswell. They looked amazing. Ryle is going to crank it up and throw deep, and it's going to be caught. Devin Williams to the 21-yard line. I don't know how far he threw that or how high he threw that, but that was different. 49 yards on the strike. Riola to Williams, they've connected before tonight, and this one was the home run variety. He just runs right underneath that ball. Clock ticks, 109. A little bit of a pitch Great play to Blackwell. Right there. Nice job by number five for Marietta. That's Jaleel Smith. Man, he fights off the block and just... You want to talk about setting the edge, Brandon. That is pitcher perfect setting the edge. Well, you hear that all the time on Saturdays. Can we set the edge for this? That's exactly what number five just did. Jaleel Smith, another player, much like Bobby Butler, look missed at, last look year at, because he of off injury. two blocks. Fights off two blocks to make that time. Very impressive. Nice job. Another one of those guys that did not play really in 2022, battled injury, came back this year, and has really provided a pretty big spark. One of the things that Rich Morgan likes is he's got three senior starters at linebacker. Says that's going to be very valuable in region play and some success on the ground for Dylan McCoy. I'll tell you one thing that Riola has, and that is great ball fakes. It's hard, he carries out every fake, and it's hard to tell where the ball's going. So the last two Buford possessions have resulted in no points. Marietta deserves credit defensively for that. But if they're going to do that again, it's going to take some real work as Buford sits on a first down. And to find out the result of all of that. We'll have to wait for the fourth quarter, but as we get ready to begin fourth quarter action, how about the incredible scene here at Tom Ryden Stadium? A little different here now. A little different. You see the beautiful scene there, but you're also going to enjoy the uh, light show. Georgia tomorrow for a night game at San Francisco gets a chance to show off its LED lights, and Buford will have a chance to do that here right now as well as we get ready for the game's final 12 minutes. We saw this last year at Cartersville, if you remember. They, they shut it off in the fourth quarter, so... So after that, there may be a little bit of a technical issue with the well, light show. So man. we'll instead take a time out. After the buildup, we apologize for that. But apparently the lights aren't quite working. Sometimes I guess they're finicky. Nonetheless, we got fourth quarter action right after this. Yeah. This Saturday, ACC football on the CW continues. To the end zone for the touchdown. Because this is my moment. The Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech go on the road to Wake Forest to challenge the Demon Deacons on their home turf in a battle between two of the most high-octane offenses in the conference. 
Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, Saturday on Peachtree TV, Atlantis CW. You don't have to wake up on the right side of the bed to know how you like your coffee, as long as it's McCafe Coffee from Mickey D's. Now that's what you like. Mix and match two breakfast hits for $4.49 and any size iced coffee for $1.79. Wake up. Gotta go. Let's go. Guys, come on. Favorite color? Because it's like a family thing. Mom. Leave running behind, behind. The new turbocharged Volkswagen Atlas does life beautifully. Visit your Volkswagen dealer during Fall Fest and lease the 2024 Atlas SE for just $3.99 a month. Limited inventory available. Did you know that Ingalls sells more organics than any other grocery store? Or that they run their own dairy? Or that they only serve USDA choice and prime meat? Or that they donate 3,956 meals a day to local food banks? Well, now you do. It's all in the bag. All right, welcome back. I'm here with Buford head coach Brian Appwin. You got the 20 point lead. You have a chance to extend it right here, heading into the fourth. What's pleased you so far in the game tonight? Defense has pleased me. I mean, I just think we're, we're moving the ball everywhere. We just can't finish drives. So I hope we finish this drive right here. Awesome. We're looking forward to it. Dylan just had a huge throw, setting up this potential touchdown. We'll join you in the fourth quarter. Thank you, Craig. And, you know, Brian Appling and Rich Morgan, two of the best guys you could ever encounter. But there are also no more, like, no-nonsense football coaches in the world. They just get right to the point. They tell you exactly what they're thinking, and that's just the way that it is. And straight up the middle. And they're going to say stop just short of the goal line. Kobe Blackwell on that play got right to the goal line. We hesitated to see if the hands went in the air, but they did not. And so Buford going to scrimmage a first and goal here. Ooh. That, that, that might have got challenged in the Corky Kell. In the state championship with the Corky Kell in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So Ryola will be in the shotgun. Blackwell will stay as the tailback behind him. He'll get another chance, and this time he's in the backfield. And Marietta's made its plays defensively. You, you could, you've got to say that, and that's Kelvin Shaw again. He's a good football player. I like this Marietta linebacking group. I, I like Marietta's defense, and they've given up a few chunk plays here and there. But, I mean, this young sophomore quarterback, and then the way they played on defense tonight. Let's hope that. Bolden and Blackwell going to come off for Buford. Going to bring in McCoy there as the tailback. Also, to have a fullback and the two tight end power set from Buford. Hand off to McCoy. McCoy fighting, yep. and he gets in. Yep. So the power set works for Buford. They extend their lead. And there are the lights going on and off. If this would have happened when we were in high school, Rusty, we would have assumed that someone failed to pay the power bill. There's but no doubt. Here it's part of the show. The lights we had back in those days, they went off. It took 30 minutes for them to come back on. That's right. In the old high school yeah, gym, they had that. Heat them up. They made the buzzing noise. Oh, yeah. So we're going to see Ventura come on and try the PAT. And if he can connect here, it'll make it a 30 to 3 ball game. And number one looking the par. He does. And while we have a moment, let's also see our game's key defensive stop. It happened a moment ago. Marietta on the verge of a big drive. And Buford, well, they just do it so well. Bryson Banks got the hand in the air. Ty White was there for the interception. And it's presented by the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office. And really, that was such a pivotal moment because I, I think prior to that, we had the indication that Marietta may be heading down looking for a score. And if it's 13 moving into the, the, the if the deficit's yes. 13 moving into the fourth quarter, it, it's a very different feel here. And instead, you, now it's 30 I'm telling you, Buford is banged up on the defensive line right now. They're only playing four guys. Brad, let me give you a quick score. 
with 40 seconds left. Douglas County is now 30. Langston Hughes, 27. I mean, we said before that we're both aware, and you see our scoring summary brought to you by Breda Pest Management. McCoy caps it off with a two-yard touchdown run. We said before that people need to be aware of how deep oh, this Douglas yeah. County roster no is. Doubt. They've had some transfers and things like that that have bolstered their attack, but and this is still a surprising score. And they are starting five, like, junior, so sophomore offensive linemen. Kick going to be returnable inside the five. Coming across the 25, up to about the 27. We also saw Langston Hughes play Douglas County on Peachtree TV last year. And for a half. In now. the half, Douglas County was competitive in that game then. Langston Hughes was one of the best teams in the country. In the country last year. And certainly, uh, maybe pound for pound, the best team in the state overall. And, and a better Douglas County roster right now has a lead. It's, it's, it's a really interesting story there in 6A. And it's one of those things you talk about, you know, how you potentially match up the playoffs. There are a lot of teams that are going to be very disappointed to see Langston Hughes lose that game if that's the way this one finishes. Yep. Oh, no doubt. Bay continuing to tough it out for Marietta. This is a Marietta team that was state champs there in 2019 with a roster kind of similar to what we think of Buford is kind of having now. Trying to connect with Butler. Oh, yeah. Cyrus Gilbert's going to get flagged for pass interference. May have gotten there a step early. He didn't agree with it, but the contact probably what sold the officials. Yeah, on he that. cut the route off there. Come underneath it. That's the defense. I'm telling you now, we are going to Houston County next week, and we're going to see one of the top quarterbacks in the country making his really regular. Now, we've had him on Georgia League Classic on TV, but yeah. he's going to make his, like, national uh, appearance in A.J. Hill. Yeah, people are going to enjoy seeing him if they haven't had a chance to see him before. Much of our audience will not have been able to. There's Butler completion again. Run to 48. At about six that time. Finish the point I was making a moment ago. So when Marietta wins the state title in 2019, we're talking about the Ojolari brothers earlier. Yep. Obviously, uh, Harrison Bailey, the quarterback. Yep. You know, uh, Ari Gilbert. The the level of talent that Mel Marietta Mel would have had then. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Ramel Keaton. Very much in keeping with kind of what you see on a Buford sideline here right now. No doubt. So, no doubt. you know, Marietta fans certainly understand what all that's about. As you see the uh, screen set up, and it's going to actually work out pretty well for Bay. I tell you, man, look, he's hurt. He's hurt again. I'm telling you right now, this kid's underrated. Yeah, he, he is under-recruited. He is a senior. I mean, look he is fought hard. hard. Playing, no doubt. You think that guy couldn't play for my team anytime he no wanted doubt. to if he's going to fight like that? I, mean, I think the challenge for Marietta, you know, to kind of go back to the state championship is – when you are now a few years removed from that, you know, players that have any kind of personal living memory of that team and that standard, some of that cycles out of your program eventually, and you got to try to find a way to reinstill those values in new players. Yep. And that's not an easy thing to necessarily do. As you see a handoff going the way of Jalen Frazier. And I'll tell you this, there, there's no, you know, moral victories at, at Marietta. But I'm going to tell you something right now. They're going to watch this tape and say, you see what we did against a top 10 team in the country and the positive plays that we had. See Calvary Day on top of Savannah Christian. The, the private schools in the Savannah area are all really fun. Really good right now. Look at this run. How about that? That's Frazier again. So Frazier is in because of the Bay injury. And now Frazier himself, I think, is going to be a little slow to get up on this. Boy, you hate to see that. Yeah, Look at is. him. Yeah. Change of direction. I think he's, is, he, is he cramping, maybe? Hopefully. All right, so with Frazier down, we'll take a timeout here. Buford's leading 30-3, to number one looking the part. The physical game is resulting in some injuries here right now. We'll be right back. Dang, where you get this car? You need to join the union. The union? Absolutely. You can get 10 of these. 
Union construction workers earn the highest wages with the best benefits and the most protection in the construction industry. Find your career in construction. Go to georgiaconstructioncareers.com and start your future today. Hendrick. Drive now. Pay later. Shop HendrickCars.com this month and make no payments for 90 days. Over 20,000 new and pre-owned vehicles. No payments for 90 days. Visit HendrickCars.com. My marriage kind of took a different path. He told me he was not moving back into the home. My biggest fear was the unknown. What would happen with the children and myself? What would happen with the house? I found Meriwether and Tharp. They told me that they would walk me through this divorce and they did that tenfold. You need an attorney. You need the best attorney and that's going to be Meriwether and Tharp. Great teams are committed, focused on the details and work hard to be their best. From practice to games, right down to their gear. Your field is a critical part of the game that allows your athletes to showcase their athletic abilities. Sports Turf is committed to bringing your team innovative sports surfaces with unparalleled performance. You bring the vision. Our team brings it to life. And we are back first and 10 for Marietta. Snipes going to take a high snap, try to throw towards Butler in the end zone. And really tough coverage from Jalen Neal. Senior defensive back. Buford so good at jockeying for position when the ball's in the air. They're just very, very tough kind of body for body in a situation like that. Of course, we mentioned this obviously many times earlier in our broadcast and throughout the night, but to repeat what we've said before to everybody from Marietta High School, we obviously are thinking about all of you and praying sincerely after the it's a tough, horribly, horribly tragic circumstances involving the car accident with Liv Teverino, who we've had a chance to hear from a lot of people in the Marietta community, yep. and we're told the stories, great student, a, a good friend, and someone that that a lot of the players on this Marietta football team are also close yeah. to as well. Look at number two right there, Luke Morgan, and Coach Morgan told me, he said, look, my son has been upset all week. I, I, I don't even, I, I talked to Coach Morgan about this this week, and I had to be honest, I said, I don't even know what to say. Yeah. This is the kind of thing that your son, these players, the students yeah. at Marietta, they should not have to go through this. This is just an unimaginable set of circumstances. So words ring hollow sometimes. We're obviously, you know, so so sorry for what they've dealt with as you see the uh, pass there to butler he's continuing to fight hard as well and once again neil had the coverage so for buford you know this is a team that has obviously challenged itself with out of state competition to begin the year they get a win against a nationally ranked team go up north carolina you know leaving the state to go play mallard creek and I think this team is really kind of rounding in form. They've, they've been banged up along the offensive line and probably haven't played their best up front yet because of that. Yeah, then you get their players back and still trying to figure out. I'll tell you, the biggest thing right now as you look going toward this game is you play Collins Hill next week. That's they, right. You know, really, really another good football team. Then you have that bye week before the Mill Creek game. So you want to get your guys back. And the snipes pass going to fall incomplete. That's going to be a turnover. And, you know, to be honest, I have kind of been on the table a little bit this season for the idea that I thought the 7A classification could be open, that there could be a lot of teams competing for the state championship. Buford's obviously ranked number one for a reason. I've been adamant that I think this is a deep classification where we could have some room for some surprises. I will say that while I haven't changed my mind on that, when you see Buford and what they can do with Riola, yep. the myriad ways they make it tough for you defensively, they it goes without saying, but they are a very, very tough outcome. And, and I can play tell you, time. I can tell you, I'm not get in their game plan, but they got some stuff they haven't shown yet with him. And you see a lot of this running right now, and they're winning like this, but they've got stuff with him. Uh, they're going to turn loose when they need to, and you'll, I'm, I'm sure 
You'll see some of that next week with Collins Hill, but I'm certainly, when you go into that most likely region championship with Mill Creek, you're going to see the, four ar the, the full arsenal of what Buford believes they have. And also, you know, don't discredit, they're also missing a left tackle tonight. It's got about 30-something offers in mm -hmm. Braden Jacobs, uh, who's a 2025. We uh, haven't seen Justin Baker tonight. Uh, yep. I don't believe we've seen Jordan Allen tonight. Another high-level D1 player. So some of the top weaponry for Buford really hasn't been on display. Is now Buford going to kind of go into the depth here a little bit for got a, got a final? Douglas County beat Hughes County. Douglas County has beaten Langston Hughes. Talking about that's as big a result as we've seen this how, season how, thus far. No doubt. How about Johnny White and that Douglas County team? A really, really good coach. It's fun to be around. He loves it. He loves it. I, I like his energy a lot. He loves it. It's the kind of thing that's going to have everybody talking, everybody buzzing. And it's kind of like one of those old school things where, you know, back in the day, you'd listen to the scoreboard show in the radio, trying to get an update from somewhere. And these updates are kind of flowing in and people reacting to it. Riola tries to connect with his tight end, Hayden Bradley. So Dylan's still in the game, up 27 with 643. Keep in mind that Dylan's brother is the backup quarterback on this team. Yeah, Dayton Riola. And I talked with Coach Condon. I said, what, what type of player is, you know, Dayton? He said, Rusty, he's, he's pretty good, too. He said, he's a pup, but uh, he's pretty good, too. So they're they're excited about him and when I talked to Dom Rayola his dad and I said hey you know he goes look Rusty this move just went for Dylan I've got a younger one I got to make sure that we make the right move for him as well and there was a lot of thought process going into when they came from Arizona to Buford you see the punt away gonna roll inside and some people, 30. you know, I'll say this. Some Georgia fans are going to watch tonight and go, man, they're killing his stat. Let's talk about this when we come back from break. I'll mention a couple things on that. I want to hear that from you, Rusty. So let me take a quick time out here. We'll all take one. And then I want to hear the point on that. So uh, we'll be right back after this on Peachtree TV. Attention, it's time for the morning announcements. Make sure your parents are aware of the Ingalls Tools for Schools program and ask them to link their Ingalls Advantage card to our school. Remember, you have to do it each year. Now please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You don't have to wake up on the right side of the bed to know how you like your coffee, as long as it's McCafe Coffee from Mickey D's. Now that's what you like. Mix and match two breakfast hits for $4.49. Add any size iced coffee for $1.79. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Volkswagen Taos. German engineering everyone can get into. Get 3.9% APR financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Taos S or lease one for just $2.29 a month. At Creators, we handcraft every batch of our delicious popcorn. Like our Creators cheese and caramel mix. Great on their own, even better together. Try Creators, handcrafted small batch popcorn. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Brandon Adams, Rusty Manziel here on Peachtree TV. And let's, uh, before we get back to live action, let's get you a Georgia League Classic recruiting report presented by Dog Nation. Yeah, I got a big one tonight. Some of the first invites. You see the seniors, juniors, sophomore, freshmen, some of the eighth graders. Uh, you know, obviously, we got a bunch of invites going out. But here's the uh, first ones we have released in the regular season. Some new names, some guys we watched some tape on this week. And really, really like Javin, uh, Javin Parker. Uh, at East Paul running back, and you see, uh, you know, some of these get Aiden Kane, defensive lineman, touchdown. Grayson Villar, young man, is starting to play some varsity as a freshman wow. in Cartersville. That's not an easy thing to do at that place. And by the way, speaking of freshmen, you know, one of the things that's been interesting for Marietta tonight is, you know, they've had a, and you see, 
Buford still flying to the football defense. They've been a freshman right tackle starting for most this year, Tate Jones. That's a pretty big guy. That's perhaps a name we could see yeah. maybe one day in a Georgia League classic conversation. But before we went to break, you were making a point. Yep. I wanted you a chance to finish that. Right, so some Georgia fans are going to watch us tonight and go, man, they're, they're not helping Rayola. They're not helping Rayola with his stats and all that. Here's a conversation I had as we go out this play. You see Snipes throwing into traffic. When they came to Buford as a family, they were very aware of the running tradition here. And the comment made to me was, Rusty, stats don't matter. We want to play high-level football, we want to get developed, and we want a chance to win the state championship. So when people watch this and go, man, he's not throwing it, it's not a priority to him. He wants to win games, and it's important for Dylan Riola to try to win a state championship at Buford and at at, at in the state of Georgia. Is it fair to say that they made the, the Rayola family to move here to Buford from Arizona maybe almost more because of the younger Rayola than, than, than Dylan himself? That's an interception. Buford still playing hard here to the final whistle. Well, I think you, I think they, they had to find a place for him to play. Obviously, this well-documented that with him transferring schools in Arizona, there was a potential for him to miss games there. Let me give a shout-out to a Dion Miller here who comes with the, the, the pick there, the sophomore, Miller. Nice play late. but and, and it was important to their family. They wanted to watch Georgia play as many times as they could in person. You come here, and I know people – want to say, hey, Buford recruited him and all this. I'll tell you what Buford had going for them. They had the lake. Yeah. Their dad wanted to live on the lake. And, you know, you're talking about a long time, a 15-year NFL veteran who loves to play golf, loved this area when he came over and visited. And, you know, that was kind of sealed the deal because he knows for both of his sons, he's going to have – Good players around them. It's going to be a really good football program. They're going to play high-level football here at Buford. And also part it's of 7A the, in Georgia. Part of the secret to Buford's success for many, many years, I'm talking about going back to back when this was a single and double-A team program, part of the secret of the success is is this is a very sought-after community. You oh, know, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's a city system here in Gwinnett County. It's near Lake Lanier. We're in the red zone presented by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. You know, housing prizes and, and, and desirable neighborhoods. That's always been a big positive selling point here. Uh, people like living in this community, and typically when people like living in a community, the school systems typically thrive, and that's only been the case for Buford City Schools over the years. Yep. Right over the handoff. Ethan Irvin getting a chance to carry the ball. I put a tweet out a couple weeks ago with the, kind of the, 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 the number, and people were like, wait a minute, $60 million For a new stadium? That, oh, by the way, they got a $300 million new school. Yeah. So let's, let's keep that in perspective as well. Yeah, it's like when you stand here at the broadcast booth at Tom Ryan Stadium, you kind of survey the situation. You see across the field from where people can see right now a couple of big practice fields. Four turf fields right here in front. Four of turf fields. You see the, you know, kind of Buford Arena where the oh, basketball team plays. I know our friends up in Milton like call themselves the Empire, but there's a certain <laughs> imperial <laughs> tendency here in terms of how this school complex just keeps spreading wider and wider and wider. Ryle are going to go out of bounds. Smart play there just to eat that, not take a hit. And, you know, to go back to the point we're making about moving from Arizona to Georgia, one of the things that Brian Tapling, we're told anyway, made very clear is, Hey, you're going to have to come in here and earn this job. Because, right. you know, Buford was already a good team before Dylan got here. Now, Dylan's one of the best players in the country, so no one's surprised that he did win the starting job here. But this was not a gift. Had two quarterbacks here battling for the job. As Ventura now is going to try a 35-yard kick. And that's a low Blocked. kick. May have been blocked. Yeah, it was blocked. Yeah. Um, and so that's going to become a touchback now for Milton after the miss. And that's another effort play that you like out of Marietta. Little things like that that your kids are still playing hard. We'll make that our Gordo's cheesy play of the game presented by Gordo's Cheese Dip. Comes up the middle. Nice job. Number eight for Marietta. And it's Anthony Crua. Nice job. Talk about Crua earlier. You know, he was a defensive lineman. They moved him to linebacker. Then they felt like they kind of missed his presence in the defensive line. Moved him back to defensive line. And, you know, We've certainly seen remnants of it tonight, but Rich Morgan really believes that Marietta defensive line can be one of this team's strengths. 
and it is their overall I'm, I'm interested in how they finish. I really think they've got a chance in that region. See a little dump off. Now it seems they've made the move to a sophomore quarterback. So th at this point, Brandon, now you have a week to put a game plan in around him. What does he do well? Nice to see Canty back in the game, by the way. He took a big, big hit shot. earlier yep. Yep. from K.J. Bolden. Canty's played a ton on both sides. He's actually made a good number of plays on both sides, and he's able to go back in, which we love. Let me pick your brain about tomorrow. Obviously, you know, outside the state of Georgia, it's one of the biggest weeks of oh, the uh, college football right. regular season. Uh, as you see, pressure coming, and <laughs> Snipes lucky to get that one away. I I'll say this. Caleb Tetta had the, had the pass rush. All the storylines tomorrow, six games of ranked teams facing each other. There's a lot of storylines. I am extremely interested in Clemson and Florida State. I am too. Because I think that if Clemson loses that game, the momentum, a lot of momentum is sucked out of that program because you already lost, you already got worked by Duke. That's right. Now, now Clemson backs against the wall. Death Valley tomorrow. This is a telltale game about where this program really is, I think. Snipes, that's a pass complete to Butler. Butler going to be wrestled to the ground. Short. No, they're going to say four progress. Four progress are going to give it to him, and that's the right call. Yeah, you know, Clemson's won seven straight against Florida State. I mean, so. they have been the kings of the ACC. Florida State with the best opportunity best opportunity as well for Lane Kiffin if he's ever going to beat Alabama this is his opportunity I think Alabama's down we're going to find out a lot about Ole Miss tomorrow I would say there's more mystery in the college football season right now than we've seen through the first month in quite some time a good open field tackle by Nasir McCoy on Bay I don't McCoy know. just a sophomore I don't know if the the Twitter X servers could handle Lane Kiffin if he beats Alabama I know it Weird to see how Nick Saban handled his quarterbacks the last couple of weeks. I, don't want, I, I, I thought he should have stayed with Milrow to me. Here's a throw by Snipes. Morgan was the closest receiver in the area. I'll tell you because I don't I, – I, I, I take Alabama in that game tomorrow. I do too. I, I just think Alabama physically they can game plan. My question is does Ole Miss want to play in a phone booth? Because Alabama is going to try to make it that way. Their Alabama's defense last week played really good. I, I don't. I know it's South Florida, but offensively they got a lot to figure out. And I don't know what type of game plan they're gonna come up with with him. It's at home. They're physical in the box on defense. Snipes dumps it to Bay. Bay gets himself a block, and he's gonna get into the first down. So you can't say either of these teams aren't playing hard right now. They got a player down. Beer for number 24. Slow to get up. Yeah, that's up. Nasir McCoy. McCoy made a good play a moment ago. McCoy, even though he's a 2026 prospect, has already got a good long list of offers, too. Imagine that. I should have came to Buford and got a couple offers. I believe that DeVry, somebody would offer me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Snipes, oh, into coverage. There were a lot of folks around Butler right there. That's probably one to learn from. See Coach pointing over on the sidelines. It's a lot easier to point from the sidelines when you're not staring down the that Buford defensive line. Everybody. That's exactly right. What do you think we're going to see out of Georgia tomorrow? Extremely banged up team. Uh, this 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 Carson Beck's. You know, listen. A lot of people. We we can talk the rest of the night on Carson Beck. Didn't throw a touchdown pass last week. Still very very efficient. Is this the game that Carson Beck kind of gets that? that momentum going and, and turns it loose tomorrow night. When you talk to people this week, there's certainly a sense that the way they finished the South Carolina game last week perhaps gives momentum to start this game. As Snipes throws, complete middle of the field. Noah Brown inside the 40. And listen, I don't know that there's any kind of real evaluation of Georgia coming for a few more weeks until they start playing a more substantial level of competition. But I also don't think you want to go on the road to Auburn next week, having no gotten off to four slow starts, at no least doubt. as Kirby Smart would say, scoring-wise. Yeah. Yardage-wise, probably not such a slow start. But in terms of scoring-wise, you probably do want to put it together for four quarters before going on the road. Snipes. I tell you, the thing that I thought gave them momentum 
was inserting Ra Ra Thomas in the lineup. It was very interesting last week for Georgia when they really had to make stuff happen. It was Ra Ra, it was Dominic Lovett, it was these veteran players yes. who played elsewhere, but in the SEC, they were called upon. I don't know who knows the playbook, and I don't know who doesn't, but I can tell you what, when they were down two touchdowns at halftime, Ra Ra Thomas got put in the game. Uh, you, you could not help but notice that. And by the way, speaking of Auburn, how about going on the road tomorrow to Texas A&M? Snipes will throw again. They're just really trying to make something happen here. And, and I like this. You got this, I, young I do too. Kid, you got this young quarterback. He hasn't been your starter. Yeah. Every rep is valuable for him right now. Learn by doing is probably the, you know, kind of the best thing here. But, I mean, I think a lot of folks are interested to see, you know, Hugh Freeze first big opportunity, kind of a big game. They've already traveled on the road this year. They went to Cal. That was not a very pretty game. But got home, got home at 7 a.m. That's crazy. A lot of Auburn fans traveled out there, by the way. Oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, if Georgia played out there, they would they would that as well. Which, by the way, they're expecting a repeat in South Bend tomorrow of the Georgia takeover from 2017 with heard that Ohio State fans coming in sack. Down he goes. Good pass pressure resulting in a sack. And I don't have a number 95 in my roster. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Good job, though. It is a good job. Um, you, know, you hear you hear Trent Dilfer make those comments about, you know, playing Athens tomorrow night. I heard Rick Neuhauser talking about college football, and he went in depth this week, and he said, listen, the, the product of the NFL is number one in the world, and it's no comparison because right. it's professionals. He goes, but I'm going to tell you right now, I've been on both sides. The game day atmosphere of college football no is not even not even questioned. No doubt. Snipes flag comes in. And I really kind of came out of the womb thinking that, you know, it's just oh, kind of no, funny. Well, yeah, yeah. And I love watching the NFL. Yeah, I enjoy yeah. resting on Sunday after a big, busy Saturday and, yep. and kind of catching up. But I, I know you're kind of very much the same way. I just I, have always loved Fridays and Saturdays so much. I've been to Buffalo, and I've been to two games in Buffalo. I've been to Cleveland. I have been to some big-time places in the NFL, and I can tell you I understand the atmosphere. But both times I went to Buffalo, you play at 1, so you get there at 1030, you have a couple, yeah. you go to the game, and everybody's out of there. It's not an all-day tailgate. It's not bands and, and those types of things. So it is an, an electric atmosphere at those places. But there's something about big game Friday night in the state of Georgia and then getting up in college football in the South, wherever you're at, family sitting around. I mean, when you tell people you're getting married in the fall, like, it's it's a bad deal. It can be. It's a bad sure. deal. You mentioned the Cleveland Browns. How about the outpouring of support for Nick Chubb right now? I know what, just, uh, the oh. Chubb family you've had interactions with, obviously, over the years. I, 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 I certainly hope Nick remains in good spirits. I believe that he will. He's yeah. been through tough injury recovery before. Yeah. And I hope he does take some comfort from how much support he's gotten from the football world and dog, you know, dog fans all over. Incomplete. Big hits being levied there, too. Tell you what, man, you just... I've known him since he was 15 years old, and I, it, it just it was just different, Brandon, when you saw that look on his face getting on that cart. Because here's the thing about Nick Chubb. He does everything the right way. He does. And he, this guy works out at Cedar Town High School every single day. He's all about his community. So let's go back and take a look at one of the most exciting moments from today's game. We'll make this the game's key first dance presented by the Atlanta Falcons. How about Ryola almost going down to a knee, having to throw literally from the ground almost. An amazing diving catch by Devin Williams. Of course, the Atlanta Falcons bring that to you. Big game Sunday for the Falcons at Detroit. That's exactly right. And I hope that Devin Ritter makes a throw as good as the one that Ryola made there. I'll tell you what, in a losing effort, Quay Walker, 17 tackles, eight solo against the Falcons. That's quite a performance from Walker. Of course, the pride of... Poor deal, Georgia. Brother in yeah, now. Yeah, now you see the uh, new quarterback in. Dayton. Dayton Riola, just a sophomore. <laughs> I 
going to be a fun experience for him. We saw both Riolas on the field here today. It's by four, probably four thirty in the afternoon. You so know, they go through. They go through the same exact warm up. Patrick Mahomes does the exact same stretch. They were literally almost the only two guys even on the they field. They were the only two. Yeah, hundred percent. And you mentioned the quarterback trainer they've kind of worked with. Actually, let yep. me show you the play of the game here. Uh, K.J. Bolden, obviously, takes the jet sweep. Watch him stop, stop right here. Now watch this acceleration right there. When you split defenders, that's the Miko to me. And that is going to do it, both for our play of the game, but also for the game. Buford, number one in the state. Top 10 ranked consensus nationally. And they get a big win tonight at Tom Ryan Stadium. And a little bit of a final tune up as they get ready to head into region play. And a little bit of a reminder that a team that fell short of winning a state championship last year, trying to become the first to ever do it in all of Georgia's classifications, has some hunger to come back and do that again this year. To bring home the prize they were not able to bring a year ago. That is on the mind of these Buford Wolves and their leader, Brian Appling. And speaking of Coach Appling, in just a moment, we'll get a chance to hear from him with Craig Sager, Jr. And Craig is standing by right now. Craig with Coach Appling, take it away. All right, I'm here with head coach Brian Appwin. You guys are 5-0. Defense keeps them out of the end zone tonight. What impressed you? How hungry is this team? Um, I think they want to win. They want to do it right, which is not, which is we're one guy away a lot of times. It, it, it keeps happening over and over again. So I'm proud of them finishing. I'm proud of them not letting them in the end zone. But we got we got to finish more drives and we got to, we got to finish more tackles on defense. Play a little bit better on special teams and spots, which is up and down right now. We're up and down. Then defensively, Marietta, they got a really talented front. What did you just see from your offensive line communicating, just trying to keep that offense balanced? I think they play harder. We just missed some assignments here and there. I think we play as hard as we played up front and move some people. It's just not enough every play. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's every other play, and there's one guy that does something wrong and somebody gets tackled for loss. It's hard to overcome second and 13, man. It's just like it is. And during this 5 and no start, just talk about the defensive effort you guys have been able to just have week in and week out. Proud of those guys. We're playing a lot of people, man. We really are playing a lot of safeties, a lot of, a lot of linebackers, a lot of D linemen. And we're banged up a little bit, but you know what? Most of those guys will be back next week, so I'm just ready to get back to the drawing board in the morning and see what we can do next week. Awesome. Well, good luck, Coach. 5-0 um, and o, Buford heading into region play next week. A big win tonight. Yikey wawa. Running out of hot water is one way your water heater cries out for help. Call R.S. Andrews. Get a water heater rejuvenation. Your water heater gets added life. You get more hot water. Another way R.S. Andrews makes you smile today. I've used R.S. Andrews 15 years. Purchased two heating and air systems, so I rely on their technicians for service. I call, they come, it's fixed. And I appreciate Andrews' commitment. He gives it his all. That's how R.S. Andrews makes me smile. What does it mean when people say America is a land of opportunity? It means the power to discover. To redefine yourself. To improve yourself. To challenge yourself. To realize there's more in you than you ever knew that you could do. It means giving people an open field to explore what they do best. With the best tools. The best training. The best technology in the world. We bring out the best in the people who serve. So you can be all you can be. A journeyman with Local 85, when you turn out, you can be hitting six figures. Hey, I have your back, you have my back, we're going to do this together. We're, we're one for all, all for one. College just wasn't for me. Let's look into actual career jobs that wouldn't take college, where I wouldn't, you know, lose money and all that. Instead of losing a lot more money at the end, why not make money and make more money at the end? The GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com drive for the GHSA state title is sponsored by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 613, Electrify Your Career, Gordo's, Fiesta Every Day, Personal Touch Lawn Care, the smallest details make the biggest difference, Meriwether and Tharp, Meriwether and Tharp LLC, the Atlanta Divorce Team.com, RS Andrews, story after story, we deliver smiles. 
and by Breda Pest Management, the official pest control of Atlanta. And welcome to the Tailgate Show, brought to you by GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com. I'm Kelly Mansell with Score Atlanta reporter Craig Sager. Final score here, 33. I think one thing that we had to point out, though, is that Marietta did hold Buford to just seven points in the second half. What does that say about the Blue Devils? That's right. I was impressed with Marietta's defensive front. I thought they did a good job of making it difficult for that Buford offense. I just talked to Coach Appwin, though, and I thought it was just so true what he said. It seems like they're one guy away from basically hitting their stride. We see all the talent out there, but I thought Buford left some points on the board. We have not seen them hit their peak yet. Maybe that will come in region play, but 5-0 and start nonetheless, and you got to be impressed with that defense. Clearly, the 7A bracket is one of the most competitive that we've seen yet. Based on what we saw tonight, how far do we think Buford can realistically go? Well, you look across 7A, let's see. I mean, Walton obviously beat them last year. A team that I think would match up really well with them is Grayson. They're playing outstanding, had a huge win over Lowndes in the region. Obviously, got the big Mill Creek game. I think it's just about what Coach Appwin said. I mean, they had some miscues on special teams, too, missing field goals. They still have some cleaning up to do, but they're undefeated. Uh, we know what they can do, and it's, it's Buford. And looking ahead to next week, we will travel to Middle Georgia to see Lee County face off with Houston County. But in the meantime, let's take a look at some of the scores from around tonight. This is our scoreboard brought to you by Score Atlanta. I had the chance to look at some of those earlier. The scores that stand out to me, Colquitt County over Cedar Grove, 50 to 42. Cedar Grove made uh, making some headway. They were down by a lot more when we got the chance to see them at halftime and then Grayson shutting out Lowndes. Yep, Cedar Grove showed a lot of fight in that game coming back at Colquitt. Not an easy place to play. Grayson, phenomenal statement victory right there for Coach Bryant. They're on fire after that uh, week one loss. And then Carrollton handling business against a Hillgrove team that has made no noise so far this season. Mm -hmm. And also, I mean, Wheeler, that's a big win over Campbell. Campbell's looked good. Wheeler bounced back from that North Atlanta loss. Mm -hmm. And we were watching that East Coweta Lambert game all night. I believe Lambert came back. Harrison, their first 6 0 start since 2019. They've struggled these last couple of years. So to see them make a stride for a 6 0 push is huge. Exactly. And Harrison last year had a slow start to the season, yeah. then uh, clawed their way into the playoffs. This year, they're just getting off to a strong start. They'll be a major player in that region with Marietta later on. Westlake, they bounce back from that loss last week to, to Newton, a huge win over Collins Hill. And then Mill Creek pulled away from Parkview in that second half. Big throws by Shane Throgmartin. Uh, I think he had some turnovers in that game, but showed, showed the poise in the fourth quarter, and he's having a great junior season. Looking at our next scores, I have to go straight to the bottom. Maybe the biggest upset that we've had all night. Douglas County over Hughes, 30 to 27. That game went down to the final minute, and that will be the score heard around the state tonight. Really opens up that 6A classification. Yes, Douglas County improves to 2-0 in the region. That might have been the de facto region championship game. And what I love about it is last year we televised that game. Sire Hardaway, Douglas County's quarterback, got hurt. He hurt his non-throwing elbow in that game. He missed some weeks after that, but he said he wanted that rematch. And really, that kind of hurt him during his junior season, not being able to get the attention in recruiting. But for him to go out there today, lead that Tigers team to a win over Hughes, their first loss in the regular season probably in three years, that is massive. And I had him in the poll week one in the, in the preseason, and validation for sure, that's a huge win. And also Peachtree Ridge, they're, they're undefeated. People didn't see that coming, but Darnell Kelly is now leading 7A in passing as a sophomore. Uh, BT, a big win. That defense for Blessed Trinity gets another fantastic result, and it looks like Bainbridge did hold off Ware County. Mm -hmm. And that bottom score, Clark Central, looks like they made a little bit of a push, but still couldn't ultimately come out and defeat Sammy Brown and the Jefferson Dragons. Moving to our next set of scores. Taking a look there, we have some fairly close games. Eastside Flowery Branch just decided by one touchdown. Spalding shutting out uh, Baldwin and then Fellowship Christian over Love at 30 24. I know Fellowship Christian is a team that you've had your eye on all season. Yeah, they're going to make noise in two way for sure. Love it had two straight wins going into that one. 
Uh, Spalding looks fantastic in uh, Class 4A. That was a top 10 matchup. And then Stars Mill with a huge win over Troop. Troop has th had the best defense in all of 4A. Stars Mill missed the playoffs last year with a 7-3 finish. Uh, they obviously were bitter about it. They beat LaGrange last week, Troop this week. They're in the driver's seat now in that crowded Region 4 in 4A. And moving forward for our next set of scores, East Forsyth shutting out Walnut Grove 21-0. Calvary Day, Savannah Christian, a huge rivalry down there in Savannah. Calvary Day comes out on top 42-21. Anything else stand out to you? I'm not even going to go to my arch nemesis name school at the bottom right there. Yeah, no thanks. Um, I'd say Athens Academy. I thought Mount Vernon was a really strong team this year. That's a huge win for Athens Academy. And then the way Calvary Day pulled away in that ball game, it was 21-21. You got to think that was the first pretty tight game they played all season, and they made the adjustments. The senior-led offense, Jake Merklinger, that's a big result, and I'm sure that was an exciting finish for Calvary Day. And that was our high school scoreboard brought to you by Score Atlanta. Guys, we'll be right back with our Gatorade players of the game, so don't go anywhere. This little circle of wood right here is this is where everyone from Hank Williams to Johnny Cash, they stood here. On Saturday nights, it's more than just music. It's community. It's on the Circle Network with Opry Live. Well, the first time I stepped on the circle, you know, trying not to break down in tears. The spirit of the Opry takes you to another world. How about it? How about it? Oh, yeah. Every week, be a part of history. Conway, up in heaven, if you're watching, help me. Opry Live, where legends circle back and up-and-comers step in. Would you welcome Luke Cone, the newest member of the Grand Ole Opry. The circle is powerful brings us together and moves us. That is what we call an Opry moment. Every Saturday night, country's most famous stage is live and in your home. Country plays here. Joe Buck and John Smoltz welcoming you back to the City Center Convenience Mart. Well, John, the stage is set for the final transaction. That's right, Joe. Heather's moment has arrived, and you just hope all that training pays off. Heather lays down her purchase, but Randy rings it up as slowly as he can. He is a wily veteran. It gives Heather's eyes the chance to wander. Uh-oh. Yep, she's looking at the cigarettes. There's nothing good back there. Quit now, and in five years, your odds of getting certain cancers drop 50%. Meanwhile, Randy's stone-faced. He's giving nothing away. He just stands there, wetting his cashier's finger on that sponge. Heather toes the rubber. Here we go. Heather's arm is in motion. But instead of pointing at the back wall, she just grabs the gum off the counter. That's a slick move. Heather back, back, back. She is out of there. Even Randy tips his cap to Heather. Stand up to cancer and rally wants you to reduce your risk for cancer. Go to takeahealthystand.org. Welcome back to the tailgate show presented by GeorgianConstructionCareers.com. I'm with the offensive Gatorade player of the game, K.J. Bolden, and defensive player of the game, Bryson Banks. Bryson, I'm going to start with you. An impressive defensive performance, right? Two shutouts already this season, only three points tonight. Tell me what's going through your head, man, on that scoop and fumble when you see kind of Edric Houston get the ball loose, and then what's going through your head on that play? It was just uh, pick it up and take off. That's all it really was. Just <laughs> take off and just don't, don't get caught. You know, it's just, just run away and just pull off on everybody. Right, and... KJ, you had that big play, that big rushing touchdown. So walk me through that. I seen you made a move, man. You made a nice cut, went downhill, man. So just tell me about that play and just how you were so great offensively tonight. Yeah, Coach caught me off guard. He had threw me at running back. So you know how to uh, make a play. Um, so I had got outside. I had seen two safeties uh, overflowing a little bit. So you know, made one cut, put your head down, and just use straight speed. 100%. And then just want to ask about your plans, guys, for tomorrow. Uh, obviously, it's a big Saturday. I know you're committed to James Madison, Bryson. What's your plans for tomorrow? I know they play Utah State. What are, your, what are some of your plans? What are you going uh, to be doing? Uh, just chill with the fam and chill my guys on. You know, Coach Haynes and uh, Coach Kurtz and Ned, he got everything under control. And uh, he's going to do his thing, and he gonna, uh, they're going to get the W. Right. And, KJ, I know you're committed to Florida State. Big game tomorrow in Death Valley, number three, Florida State. They're going, uh, they're going on the road to play Clemson. I know you're going to the game, man. So tell me how excited you are to go to that environment and experience that. I'm very excited. You know, to be in Death Valley, that's going to be a big game, uh, 12 o'clock game. So, you know, everybody's going to be watching. But, you know, you know who I got? 
Go knows, man. You know who I got. 100%. Well, guys, I'm going to give it to Kaylee to present on behalf of Georgia Construction Careers the Robbie Hunter MVP Award. KJ Bolden, on behalf of GeorgiaConstructionCareers.com, this is the Robbie Hunter MVP Award. Thank much, you so much deserved. Thank you so much. Phenomenal game from KJ and Bryson. Buford keeps rolling. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for tonight. Thank you so much to all the staff, the producers, IJ, uh, Kaylee, and more. This little circle of wood right here is, this is where everyone from Hank Williams to Johnny Cash, they stood here. On Saturday nights, 